I don't like to call myself Nostradamus. But hey, if I were Eagle fans, I'd be a little concerned what Big Sill said yesterday about Rams and Bills going into this weekend. NFL action. Here we are on a football Friday. Dear God, I would like to make a prayer here. Thank you for all the riches and the gifts that you give us on being able to cover sports and watch and talk about football. All of us. What a great holiday, an extended holiday weekend. In Big Sills, we pray. Amen. How you doing? Boom. I, I, I'm telling you, I am throttled, throttled about this weekend. I can't tell you how. I'm excited to see the post-game show here on Jacob with Seth and Mike and D-Gun. By the way, D-Gun joins us today at 5.30 Eastern time. Get us his spin on what he thinks about this weekend's game. First, let me reel it back in for last night. I don't know what you guys were thinking. Big Sills told you that game would not be close. You got the best quarterback in the NFL, man. And the best roster in the NFL. Have I been not telling you that the entire offseason? The Bills have the best team. And it's not close. Can you imagine killing the defending Super Bowl champions by 21 points? And you had four turnovers. Wait till they play well. I mean, and do me a favor. Don't ever compare Jalen Hurts to Josh. (laughs) Don't ever do that. I heard Barrett on Sports Take today going, hey, you know, you're kind of hoping to see the same. No, no, no. You may see a little bit of an increase in getting better for Jalen. That guy's a unicorn. Big, strong, throws dimes. When that guy throws a pass, it's like throwing an arrow. Wham, wham. Even the first interception wasn't his fault. That guy is unbelievable. (laughs) Hey, every time you guys bring up Josh Allen, there's always people here that bring up Josh Allen. Well, Josh Allen sucked in his first and second. And I'm like, eh, not like that. So some of you bring up Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. Please, God, don't do that again. You make yourselves look stupid. Jalen Hurts has no ability like that guy except in his wheels. You don't think he has an arm like Josh. (laughs) Yeah, enough with that, man. Unbelievable. Where's my boy from L.A.? Where are you, Hoss? What's up, man? I told you, don't be upset. If you're upset with me today, hey, you may be upset with me on Monday, too. And I'm going to tell you right now, just be careful here. If you don't want to hear what I'm going to say when I'm talking about Sunday's game and some of the other games, you might be upset with some of the things I say here. Okay? I didn't think that game would be close. How about Von Miller making an impact, too, with the Bills? Gets a sack. Matthew Stafford looked terrible last night. Okay? Mike goes, my God. Dude, if the Eagles had Josh Allen on their team, they would not lose a game. For three years. <laughs> Dude, that guy, he's he if you had to start your team with Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen, who would you pick? Von Miller had two sacks. Hey, yeah, no, hey, hey, Les. Really? You let that guy walk out the building, he'd come back and he haunts you. Let me ask you this, man. Who would you start with? Mahomes? Or would you start your team today with Josh Allen? Who would you start it with? Dude, Stafford was terrible. And like I told you yesterday, I think that elbow injury and the issues he has with his arm, I think it's a thing. I think it's a bigger issue. I think they're going to be okay because the NFC is not all that hot. But I I think it's a bigger deal. Allen all day, Mahomes right now, really. Steve-O says Josh was running too like Hurts. Yeah, but the difference is that guy's got a laser beam for an arm. Okay? I'm going to eat crow. Hey, dude, not on the Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts comparison. I'll never eat crow. He will never be the player that guy is. 
He may win ball games just by being the best version of Jalen. I've I've been saying that all week. He'll never be Josh. Don't don't do that to yourselves. Don't do that to yourselves. Okay, just please don't. I'd rather start my team with. Hey, look at Richie. Hang in there, guy. That's what makes you a great Eagle fan. I'll take Jalen over Josh Allen. <laughs> I love that. Allen takes too many risks. Yeah. A 21-point win over the defending champions 3,500 miles away from Buffalo. Did it matter? Hey, Josh Allen takes too many risks. This is what I tell you about. Josh Allen could throw himself out of trouble. Jalen Hurts can't. There lies the difference. That guy could get down 21 points and still come back and whip your ass. That guy has everything. He's a passer. He's a runner. He's tough as nails. By the way, I do not want to see, and I thought it was absolutely a dumb play, and I sent Ken Dorsey a text. Why are you running RPOs when you're 21 points up in the fourth quarter? Are you trying to get the guy killed? Why would you run that play? You know what he said? He audibled into it. We were like, no! I was Because I heard Barrett say that, and I wanted to send Barrett a text, but... Dorsey goes, he audibled into it. I'm like, all the offensive coaches went, why? They told him in the locker room, don't do that again. You're up 21. Game's out of reach. It's over. Don't do that. I was like, dude, but the guy wants a win. The guy wants a win. And I told you the Rams defense isn't that good. Jalen Ramsey was destroyed by Stephon Diggs. He owned him. He owned him. Okay. Owned him. Game wasn't close. Okay. Okay. Hey, what a statement the Bills make. They go on the road, kick the shit out of the defending Super Bowl champions. That's the kind of statement your Philadelphia Eagles need to make on Sunday. Well, you know, you know, it's the first game and they may limp it. I don't want to hear any of that. The Bills didn't want to hear any of that. Don't you get a shitty taste in your mouth after getting killed by the Bucks in your playoff appearance? You should have an attitude going into that Lions game. You should hear people saying this. Hey, man, I don't give a shit. Kelsey has it. Kelsey has it. We ain't done anything yet. We got to go into this game, and we got to put a statement down. That's what the Eagles have to do. Bills did it. If you're a championship football team, you'll do it too. Flex goes like this. Of course, Allen hasn't beaten Mahomes when it counts. You're right. You start Mahomes, I'll take Allen. Rent is due, baby. Okay? Hey, Mike, you don't, you, you don't want me predicting too many things because wait till you hear what I say about Eagles-Lions here in a second. Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, Aaron Rodgers, Joe Burrow, in that order, those are all awesome quarterbacks. All tremendous throwers of the football. And that's what today's game is. Devin goes, I'll take Mahomes. Hey, guess what? I don't really think Devin, if you choose one or the other, you're going to be too bad off. Mahomes at 26 has done remarkable things in his illustrious career already, too. All right. What happens on Sunday? I also, in hour number two, we're going to go over the weekend games. Other than the Lions and Eagles. I'm also going to talk about my concerns And the strengths of the Philadelphia Eagles going into Sunday's game. But let's start it off. What happens on Sunday? I think the football team, in my opinion, goes into this with pretty much the same mentality they went into last year's 44-6 win with. Thank you, Steve-O. I didn't think it was that hard. Bills are dead. 
just that much more dominant. Um, why in the world would Shane Steichen change anything that he did a year ago when they killed the Lions? Flex says, let's call it what it is. They hyped the Bills up, and they had a better team, top-ranked defense. Mahomes rises to the top. I don't think you change anything. Anything. I would make the Lions do this. Prove it to me that you stopped your issues when it comes to run defense. And if you haven't done it, why would you go away from that? Because you're trying to outsmart yourself? I don't think that the Eagle coaches are that dumb that they're going to go into this football game going, let's throw the ball 38 times and run the ball 17. If they do that, they'll lose. But I don't believe they'll do that. I think they go into this football game going like this, throwing haymakers. And what you want to do with a Lions team like that, you want to knock them out right away, and you want to make the Lions remember last year's ass kicking. Because right now what they've done, they believe in their mind that they've gotten better. Your job is to go into Ford Field and beat the shit out of them in the first two quarters to make them understand and remember who they really are. That's a mindset. That's a mentality. Here's who you are. You think you're good right now, but let me knock you around a little bit. Let me beat you up a little bit. Let me have a 12-play drive on you where I ram the ball right down your throat. Jalen, six for six. First two series, doesn't have to really throw it much. As long as you're in first and – long as you're first down, you're winning first down, and you're constantly third and short, you're going to win this ball game. I think pretty handily. But let me tell you what I think is going to re- happen here. The Lions are going to put eight in the box, and they're going to tell Jalen Hurts to come beat them. I'm not sure that's still going to be good enough to stop the Eagle run run attack, okay? I still don't believe that. The Eagles need to make that game a fist fight. Make it a fist fight. Beat them up. When you put eight guys in the box and the Eagles run your ass over, there's nothing you can really do for the next two quarters except put the white flag up and surrender. There's nothing left to do. Don't come out of your identity in a game where you can dominate because they're not very strong in stopping the run. You start getting into throwing the ball and you have three and outs, this is something to keep an eye on early in the game. If we start to see a bunch of three and outs, there's a problem going on in the play calling. Keep an eye on the three and outs. Two things, three and outs and third and long. If the Eagles are in third and long and three and outs, This game's going to go into the fourth quarter. I think a little bit of that is going to happen as well. Because the Eagles are trying to change an identity. But the question going into this Lions game is going to be, how prominent do they want to change that identity? Do they want to throw the ball a lot? Subtly? Do they want to try to be balanced where they don't have to be? You see, this is a situational play calling, again, that we talked about last year. You know what the situation calls for in this game on Sunday? Run the ball at him 38 times for 238 yards like you did last year. You did everything at will with them. The game was a breeze. Why not do it again? Show me you know how to duck. Show me you've gotten better. I think the Lions have gotten a little better. You know where I think the Lions got better? Emotionally. And they added Aiden Hutchinson. I still think their run defense stinks. Now, you start getting into three and outs, passing. You keep your opponent in the game because you're not throwing haymakers. You're jabbing again. The Lions can take jabs. They can get into a fight with Floyd Mayweather and be in the 12th round. How many stiffs did you see go into the 12th round with Floyd Mayweather? But Mayweather just dominated him. L.A. Rams, I felt for you, brother. I did, man. 
Flex goes, I don't care if the game's close. I think the Lions will be hyped. Yeah, they're going to be hyped for the first half. It's going to be up to the Philadelphia Eagles to knock their face into the ground. L.A. Rams, you guys are going to be okay, though. Okay? You just ran into the best team in football. Stafford's got to get better. By the way, where the frig was Allen Robinson? Okay? Allen Robinson, I guarantee you right now, Les Snead and Kevin Demoff are definitely keeping OBJ on the list because they're going to need that guy. Django goes like this. Do you think Gannon screws up? I'm going to get to that here in a minute. Okay? This is where I see it happening. I think it's a 28-20 game. I think they win the game by eight points because you know what they're going to try to do? They're still in some points of that game going to try to throw the ball, and it's going to be a mistake. If they come into that game and in the first half, they're dominant on the run, they got to be patient too. Be patient. You're on the road. Get the win. And then you could take control of the football game. I think it's more of a 28-20 game like that. I think they'll cover the points too. It's four in some places, three and a half in other places. Okay? My question mark again, we got question marks. I'm going to tell you what the strength and weakness is that I have going into this game and how I think this game could be close for a little bit. Okay? 31-20 Eagles. I don't think the Eagles lose this ball game, folks. I don't want anyone to think that, but I'm thinking 28-20, and Travis has got 21-20. Okay. I know. How do you miss a flight? Okay. It's unbelievable. Mr. International, 33-17. Okay. Okay. Eagles, yeah, I got it. Here's my concerns going into the game. Actually, let's do this. Here's the strengths. A.J. Brown. You get A.J. Brown on a 20 going in. I throw that guy the ball every play. He is a red zone nightmare. You better come up with plays where you have designed where that guy has jumped balls because I don't think the secondary of the Lions is very good. Make that guy go up and get it because he's going to get it. Run the ball effectively on first down. Get closer to the goal line and have jump balls with that guy. He's going to win one of the three when you throw it to him. The O-line has got to make a statement in this game. Make a statement. Okay? Make a statement. How they pass rush is going to be key in this game, too. How you rush the passer is going to be vital. Because if they can't rush the passer, and they could last year. They got sacks in this ball game last year against the Lions. Numerous guys are hurt in the O-line. Don't be looking at the injury report. Go out there and play who's in front of you. When you start doing that, you take your opponent for granted, and you keep the guy in the game or in the fight. Flex goes, funny thing is the Lions fans hyped because it sold out little to do with how the half crowd, the Eagles fan, the Eagle fans are going to be crazy there. Okay. I think the pass rush is going to get home, which is going to make the secondary, in my opinion, look like all stars. I think the secondary for the Eagles will have a very good day. I think the front seven will. Now, I don't expect him to blitz much. Okay. If you're not going to blitz Jared Goff, He's going to sit back there if he has time. And he's going to complete passes. Last year, he couldn't. You have to get home on golf if you're not going to bring pressure. Okay? Now, let's go to my concerns. Starts with Hurts. It's not so much Jalen. And I want you to listen to where I'm going with this. My concern is not about Jalen. It's about how the coaches are going to coach him in this game. Let Jalen Hurts be Jalen Hurts. If he takes off, take off. If you want to use him more in the run game, run him. Any way you can get across the goal line with him, do it. 
Throwing for 350 yards is not a goal in this game. Throwing for 250 yards, even though I said yesterday that would be a benchmark that I would like to have on this team. This is about him getting W's. Now, if it's 28-27, it'll be a different conversation on Monday and what happened. There's too many good football players, but I don't know if there's too many good football groups yet on the Eagle team. And I'm going to get to what I mean by that here in a minute. Well, let's do it now. I keep hearing Barrett and D Gun and Rob and Birds 365 talking about how everybody and all the new talent on the team. You think there'll be a communications issue when you don't practice that much? You don't know these guys, their tendencies in games. They really haven't played together. This Lions game is going to be the first time they really are going to play four quarters of football together. You understand this. They haven't played four quarters of football. There's five new faces on your defense. And you think all of them are going to have all pro years. Reddick's going to have an all pro year. Bradbury's going to have an all pro year. Kaiser White's going to, because that always pans out. Communication will be vital in this game. It'll be vital. Mike says, I'll be at the game. Lions are going to try to run. They think that's where their strength is. Mike, I'll get to them in a minute. Because the Eagles were not very good on first down last year. I think they're going to be better. Okay? I think they're going to be better. Okay? TJ Edward. Hey, Mike. I'm, I'm more talking about in-play moments than I am about alignment. And I think alignment's going to be an issue too. Anytime you have new faces and anytime that you have it, these guys have not played together. It's going to take a couple weeks to have these guys mesh. Watch this. The Eagle defense is not going to be good. And it's not going to be as good as you think against that Lions. You know when they're going to be good? Probably the Jacks game. They're probably going to be good in four weeks. And you're going to see them all on the same page. Because then you're going to see trends and reps and everybody's going to be communicating. That's when you're going to see that defense. You're going to see moments in that game where you went, holy shit, what happened there? Most of the time, that's a communications issue. You see, I come at this where, look, if you listen to any local media person in Philadelphia right now, everybody's an all-pro on the Eagle defense, and everyone's an all-pro on the Eagle offense. That's not the truth. Okay? How many all-pros did Tom Brady ever play with? And who gives a shit about that? How many all-pros did Brady play with? How many in his time where he won championships? Let's see. Hernandez? Gronk? Who? Who? Edelman, Amendola, Welker, maybe a few. It was all about playing together, communicating together. Okay? They're going to win this game. Don't outthink yourselves. This is a fist fight. Go beat them up. You beat them up last year. If you got into a fist fight with a guy you knocked out, would you not try to throw the same punch you knocked him out with? Or would you try something different? Wouldn't it be idiotic for you to get into a fight with a guy you killed the year previous and get into a fight where you're jabbing the guy and you give the guy an opportunity to knock you out? That's what made Khabib so great at UFC. This guy tried submitting you right away. He didn't watch you later on in the fight. This guy submitted you right away, man. He wasn't going to give you any air. Have a, have a Khabib mentality when you go fight this uh, Lions team. Okay? Go into that game, and we'll see what the coaches – to me, coaches will be an issue. The defensive coordinator is a massive concern of mine. Personally – 
And I can't wait to hear Seth Joyner talking about it Sunday right after because we're going to see this again. Ben, but don't break. No pressure. You're hoping your front guys get home and it's going to be the same. And he, why would he change? Why would a coordinator change on who he is? Why do you guys, because he's got what now? A pass rusher? He ain't bringing pressure. If you're not a pressure defensive coordinator, you don't become one. That whole notion in the offseason that he didn't have talent, that may well have been. But it also has nothing to do with your tendencies and how you blitz, your alignments, what type of defense you line up in. That's all in your structure. His structure hasn't changed. There's nothing different. He's just got better players. Don't you guys understand this? How much do you think Belichick's changed? You think Bill Belichick has changed as a coach today from when Brady was there? Absolutely not. He's got lesser players there now. And in some places, lesser coaches. There's no Brian Flores up there any longer, and there's no Josh McDaniel. You actually got lesser coaches up there. Lesser talent, lesser coaches. He's not any worse of a coach. He's just got lesser people in the building. And he knows it. That's why he's taking more of a role. Okay? That D coordinator's not going to in any way change who he is. He's not going to start blitzing. Why would you blitz a team also? And by the way, if we do start seeing blitzing, why would you blitz Jared Goff? Okay? And if you have a so-called front seven now with Sweat and with Reddick and everyone's saying all these guys, stop. The first thing you got to do is stop the first down runs. Because last year that killed you. I would also say this on the offensive side. Dude, Miles Sanders has to show up. I saw he said he feels good today. Great. How are they going to use him in the game? Are they going to swing past him? Is he going to, you know, that offense should run through Miles Sanders. Do you know the greatest show on turf did not run through Kurt Warner? Mike March told me numerous times that offense went through Marshall Falk. When Russell Wilson was having great success in Seattle, that offense went through Marshawn Lynch. That's how you move the chains. Tom Brady, one of the reasons why he wanted Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette's a great pass catching back. Brady sets up his run game with his intermediate passing game. The running back, it has to run through him. Because what does the running back do for Jalen? It helps him on play action. If they respect him. How is Shane Steichen using him in the offense? The centerpiece can't be Jalen Hurts when it comes to moving the sticks here. The centerpiece player outside of the quarterback has to be Miles Sanders. You'll never get the passes to Devontae and AJ if Sanders is not a factor in this game. He'll be throwing like he did a year ago. Outs and ins, 61%. And we'll be looking at a guy who's going to go up and down every week when it comes to his... Completion percentage. Okay. Yeah, well, Greasy and... Yeah, Mike March told me, and so did Vermeil. That offense went through Marshall Falk. Those were the designers of the offense. Sanders, the DC, Hurts, and the new faces concern me. Now, again, as I said, burying the lead, I do believe the Eagles win the ball game 28 to 20. If they duplicate a little bit with a twist of what they did last year's 44 to 6 win, don't be stupid. Because if that team is close to them in the fourth quarter, the Eagle coaches were stupid. This will be a coaching loss. If you're not coaching Jalen correctly, we're going to know immediately. 
three and outs, third and long. First down, you're giving up big gaps. By the way, that kid, that running back that they have, be prepared. That kid's going to be a factor in the game. Okay? DeAndre Swift, that kid can play. That kid's going to catch some passes. They're going to utilize him. He's going to be the centerpiece of their offense. You got linebacker. Are you going to put Hassan Reddick on that kid? He'll eat Hassan Reddick up all day and night. I better not see Hassan Reddick covering tight ends either in backside of the backfield. Because I'll play that guy like that all night long and get this. If I'm the Lions, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. 28-20. That's how I see it. Like I said, there'll be moments in the game that patience is going to be in a vital point. And if the coaches can, you're going to have to rely on your special teams, which is also here. Maybe one of the reasons why they lose their patience in the offense is because they don't have confidence in their special teams, especially their punt team. Do you have confidence in your punt team to kick you out of bad field position? You feel good about that? I don't. I think your kicker's good. I don't think your punter's very good. Can that guy, do you have good special teams? Because for a quarterback, Tom Brady, what he says, hey man, the punter sometimes is one of the most important players on the team. Why? Because he changes field position. Do you know that the punter and the quarterback are the only players on an NFL football team that can change position and field position on one play? You saw it last night with Stafford on picks. You got a good punter? You, 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 Ray Guy back in the day, Reggie Roby, those dudes, those guys change field position, kick you out of trouble. They're the only two players on the field that have that type of capability. OG, 30-17, if they're right and they're on and they're humming, could be there. But like I said, I got a 28-20. Lions have a good tight end. Hey, Kevin, I know. Why do you think the Bills, can you imagine if they had Matt Ariza? If they had that kid on the team, holy cow, and they stopped those turnovers, they would have put a 50-burger on the Rams. That team would have put a 50-burger on them. That thing wasn't close. Wasn't close. Jalen Hurts now versus the Lions. I want to hit on that. I'm throttled, man. I think this is going to be a good first week for the for the Eagles. If they stay on the rails. All right. Don't forget, my friends, at Morgan & Morgan where the fee is free. Folks, if you're hurt or injured on the job, one of the most important things that you could possibly do for you and your families to get the right attorney firm to represent you and your family. For the past 30 years, Morgan & Morgan has collected over $13.5 billion. That's a success that they have had when it comes to protecting and representing their clients. With over 800 attorneys and offices in Philly, New York, and in Florida, they're the biggest firm in the country, and they're ready to represent you, no matter if it's a fender bender or a case where you're going to have to have the best minds in the business, and that's Morgan & Morgan. Call them at 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. The call is free. The consultation's free. 800-512-1600. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, do me a favor. Tell them Big Sill sent you. When choosing a lawyer for your injury case, you may ask, does the size of the law firm matter? Well, of course it does. The insurance company, they're huge with unlimited resources. And whether your case is big or small, they're built to bully you out of the money you're owed. 
But here's the good news. We're big too, the biggest actually. And we're built to fight to make them pay for all that was taken from you. Size is our strength. There's only one Morgan & Morgan. ForThePeople.com. greatest fans on earth it's a bold statement but would you expect anything less from philadelphia 58 years of heartache creates a toughness a grit a resolve not found in most sure our prayers were answered but now that we've had a taste we're looking for more pondly hockey official partner of the philadelphia eagles do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on action. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go first! Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years, and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction. Go with trust. Go first! And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go first. Welcome to Pond Lee Hockey, the largest workers' compensation law firm in Pennsylvania. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured and disabled workers obtain benefits, as well as some of the biggest settlements in the state. Even better, Pond Lee Hockey doesn't charge a dime until you win. If you've been injured at work, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. Sills. National Football Show, please hit the like button. Thank you very much. By the way, you guys don't think the upside for Jalen Hurts is Josh Allen, do you? You, you, you? you don't think that, do you? Okay? You, please, don't ever bring that up again. Started the show like, I mean... We had this conversation. The end. Now, I understand where some people are bringing this up. Dan, not so much that he's going to be Josh Allen, but he did have growth spurts. I'll bend on that. I'll, I'll bend on that. Growth spurts. Okay? I saw Josh Allen know in Wyoming. I thought he was sensational then. His junior year, he was better. Senior year, not so much because... He didn't really have great talent around him. Wyoming, too. His best coaching he's ever gotten is in Buffalo right now. Some actually do. Well, they're dumb. The recipe against the Rams is to run the rock. Flex, that's why I told you last year. If the Eagles were going to get an opponent that they should get in the first round, remember I said this. Anybody... Xander, I know you remember this. I'd rather line up against the Rams than the Bucks because you can run the ball. 
The 49ers killed them on the run every year. The Rams, everyone looks at Aaron Donald and goes, they're sensational on their D-line. No, they're not. They're not that good of run stoppers. It's not what they do. It's not what he does. You want to play, if you're the Eagles, you want to play the Eagles. That's right. Xander's like, I wanted anybody but Brady. You don't want Brady, man. You don't want to have to go on the road and play Brady. I'll take Stafford on the road with an Eagle team that's number one in the NFL. I think that Rams team, I do, and get this, I think Ken Dorsey knew exactly. Run the ball and then laser beam them. Okay. Allen got digs. Now, okay. I if you gave a if you gave Jalen Hurts Stephon Diggs, you think he's doing what Josh Allen did last night, dude? You are out of your tree. He does not have exactly what OG says: the raw talent of Allen. Which hurts has to, hey, watch this. Tom Brady does not have the raw talent that Aaron Rodgers has. But Brady wins more. There's your greatest example. Hertz and Allen are Brady and Rodgers. Jalen's got to come up with a way inside of his own system the best Jalen Hurts he can be to win games. That's what Brady is. Studying hard, knowing where pre-snap stuff is. Jalen's not there yet. Shit, man. Mahomes just got there. Hurts will never be able to see the field like Allen. 6-5 helps. Okay? Let me get into... um, Let me get into, by the way, top of the hour, we're going to look at all the NFL games. Real quick here, I want to do this too. So Lamar Jackson has cut off his, and I knew he would, has cut off all of his um, negotiations with the Costa and the Ravens. They still want to get a long-term deal. You know, I have a problem with Jalen Hurts' style. I kind of have a problem with Lamar's style too. Can that style win a Super Bowl? I can't be unfair to this and go, Jalen can't win. Well, Ken Lamar, I have to be fair to that. Just because Lamar is a better version of Jalen, that doesn't mean it still translates to Super Bowls. You feel me? Nobody comparing them, that's foolish, but if he can work on his anticipation and timing, which I think he will and has. Okay. Kevin just said, would you trade for Lamar? Boy, you know, Xander asked me that. How can I sit here and look you guys in the face and go, I don't like the running quarterback style and say, let's go get Lamar Jackson for $230 million in draft choices. I don't know. The Ravens are even, the Ravens are even kind of like waffling on it. And if the Ravens are waffling, they see him every freaking day. You feel me? I mean, if the Ravens, the damn Cardinals gave Kyler Murray what he wanted, I think that's kind of an insult. If you're if you're Lamar's camp, so then you get a deal done. I'm an MVP. What has Kyler Murray done? I've actually beaten Mahomes. So I can't do this to you guys because then it comes off like I do have an agenda against Jalen and I hate him. I keep telling you guys I don't like the running quarterback style. Hey, but let's go sign Lamar. Look, all that stuff before, man, was all kidding around. That's a great question that Xander asked me. I don't know if I'd spend $230 million in three draft choices and three number ones to go get him when I'm not convinced that style wins Super Bowls. So today, right now, On September 9th, as we get ready for the weekend, if I have question marks about Jalen Hurts going into Sunday and into this 2022 year, 
I got question marks on Lamar, too, of whether or not he can win. And I'm not the only one. The Baltimore Ravens have it. Lamar, hey, Lamar has no camp but his mom. I get it. I'll tell you something, too, Brian. If I'm negotiating for $250 million, I might want someone else in the room other than my mom. I don't know, man. That's 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 too many bags of money to be sitting there, you know, not having pros in the room. You know what I mean? I'm, Big Picking goes, hey, Huntley could be the reason. Man, I love that kid. Okay? Thanks like this, that's not fair. Lamar's been working to be a better passer. Then why didn't they sign him? Hey, that's all great, Dank. And it, I understand what you're saying with my criticism of my take, but the Ravens didn't sign him. Stick with the – hey, Dank, I'm not, I'm not attacking you in any way. I'm just saying this. The Ravens didn't even buy it. They're still hedging. They don't want to put up that kind of money. I don't know. I mean, it's not just me here. Lamar got it. got an arm talent. I've seen him stretch the field. The Ravens failed to get him wideouts. That's because wideouts don't want to play there. Wideouts don't want to play in a running system. Okay? That's why the Titans got rid of A.J. Brown. That's a running football team. They didn't make the number one seed in the AFC last year because they threw the ball. They made the number one seed in Tennessee last year because they run the ball. That's who they are. And they'll always be that. Money talks, pay them $25 million and wide receivers will come. Okay? But then you got to make this call. Xander's right. But here's the reality. You ain't paying $50 million to a quarterback and $25 million to a wideout. Not happening. Not happened in Green Bay. Not happened in Kansas City. Not happening. Why do you think those guys are no longer in their buildings? Because you paid one, the one guy. You're not going to see $50 million and $25 million. You're not. That's the reality. Like Xander said, follow the money. Okay, well, I'll follow it. The teams that have the $50 million quarterbacks, why do you think Amari Cooper's now sitting in Cleveland? Cowboys ain't paying $45 million for Dak Prescott and $24 million for Amari Cooper. Not happening. The reason that A.J. Brown is in Philly is because they're paying the quarterback 1-1. That's the only reason. Oh, and they're friends. I guess I think that matters somewhere. Okay. Happened in LA. They gave him more guaranteed money. They lowered his base. He's making 34. And Cup took less money. Remember what Cup said in the offseason? Hey, you don't have to be the highest paid wide out in the game to be happy. Cooper Cup got his numbers last night. They didn't get the W, though. Okay? Let me get into Jonathan Gannon and his approach against the Lions. Would we agree this is your biggest concern going into this game? Even the, even the Jalen... Suspect guys like myself. That's a bigger deal for me. Is the DC. Would you agree? That that's your major concern. Because. I hate when I hear this. Well, he didn't have the talent last year. To really have a great defense. They were 10th, weren't they? Weren't they 10th in total defense last year? Weren't they 10th? Am I right when I say that? Okay. We had zero points in three quarters in the playoffs. My concern's quarterback, that's Xander. Okay, fair enough. A year ago, 
your defensive coordinator had the 10th ranked defense in the National Football League. Am I right when I say that? Right? 10th? Shit, you should win Super Bowls with that. 10th ranked D. I can guarantee you this. Bengals weren't 10th. Rams weren't 10th. But he didn't have the talent a year ago. No, no, no. Wasn't talent per se on the field. They didn't have the talent with the guy wearing the headsets. This guy's hit, and why I have an ass with Jonathan Gannon, he's hit behind players' inefficiencies. I freaking hate coaches who do that and blame the players for their failures. Coach them up. Do what Doug Peterson and Frank Reich did to Nick Foles. Your job as an NFL coach, no matter if it's Carson Wentz, Nick Foles, Nate Sudfeld, whomever, coach the kid up. Let the chips fall where they may. Well, we didn't have the talent. That's such a freaking lame-ass excuse, and it rubs me the wrong way every time I hear people say that. That guy's not going to be any different than who he was a year ago. Now, the play and the level of play may cover that. And you know what most of you guys will say? Seals, the defense was great. Well, it wasn't because of him. Jonathan Gannon is going to be the same guy he was last year. He had the 10th-ranked defense last year. What, do you think they're going to be a top three? Because of his understanding, I have no idea how this guy got this job. I, I, who, who hired him? Hertz is going to have to win a lot of ball games with his arms this year. Team's going to stack the box. That's what the Lions are going to do. Lions are going to put eight guys in the box against Jalen. Now, I don't think that that's still going to be enough. I think that they're so dominant at the point of attack. By the way, I can't wait to listen to Stoutland again talking about uh, Landon Dickerson. That is such a great compliment. When you have the best O-line coach talking about a player coming out of camp as the best player in his group and you have the best group in the league, I can't tell you how awesome that is and how you want, want to run through a wall now for that coach. You don't think Landon Dickerson's not going to have a Pro Bowl year and all-pro season? You got the best coach in the freaking sport saying that that kid's the most improved dude in my group. If that doesn't give you goosebumps on your arm as a player, nothing ever will in this league. You come out of that working hard, and your coach, who's got all those gifted, talented players like Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson and Jordan Malata, he picks you out of the group. You stand out in the group. Freaking unbelievably great. Man, God, would I love to be Landon Dickerson. That is so awesome. It's funny, man. I've never heard Jonathan Gannon single any one of his guys out at all during camp. Not one of them. I haven't heard this. This guy's been sensational. I, this guy's been unbelievable. He's going to have a hell of a year. I've not heard Jonathan Gannon actually talk about any of his players, except maybe Hassan Reddick covering tight ends. That's exactly what I don't want to hear. The Bill CB played five to 10 yards. Oh, yeah, they were hitters, though. And you see what Flex says? Quarterbacks are playing five to 10 yards off the ball in the front. Yeah, well, guess what? The defensive line got home. Because you know why? They knew that makeshift offensive line. And I said it to everybody. I said it to you guys yesterday. The Rams' O line is not that good. You're not going to need to bring pressure. You're not going to need it. That's a makeshift O-line. You know, three straight years that that team never really had any significant injuries in the offensive line. 
And now they got a brand new group up there. I wouldn't like to, hey, and by the way, brand new group, brand new faces. It affected the Rams, but it won't affect the Eagles, right? See, the difference is you're playing a lesser opponent, though. But I knew the Bills were going to run that team off the field. I told you that. I, and, and I even said this, it was never going to be close. Well, it was even at halftime, when it was tied, it didn't seem close. It didn't seem close. They had four turnovers, and they waxed the world champs by 21. That's freaking unbelievably awesome. <laughs> I mean, you worked that dude over, man. Okay? You worked that dude over big time. Absolutely, man. Let me ask you something here, too. You know, just 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 kind of on an off note here. How far do you think this team is going this year? I've told you where I think. And if they fall short of it, I'll hammer them. Sills is the <laughs> Hey, thank you. How far do they go? 11 wins and bounced in round one. Wow, that's Xander's take. So they're the Cowboys. You know why he's saying they're bounced in round one? Because the quarterback. That's my spin on that. You don't have a playoff quarterback. You don't have what we saw last night in Buffalo. You don't have that. Dak's not that guy. How about this? You want to hear something? Dak's not that guy. Dak's not a playoff quarterback. It's okay. A lot of teams have him. Garoppolo is a playoff quarterback. He sucks. Yeah, he's five and two. I know. He sucks. That's why they kept him. <laughs> That's why Trey Lance isn't the captain. <laughs> Told you week four, Garoppolo will be the starting quarterback once they start seeing the reality that that guy sucks. Division one double A guy. There's only two of them in the league starting, and they came from the same place. Gee, really? How's that panning out? <laughs> Honestly, how's that panning out? Second round playoffs. Super Dave says if Jalen wants a new deal, he's got to make it to the conference title. I think if Jalen wants $40 million, he has to make it to the conference championship game. In the NFC, though, maybe we do have a playoff quarterback. It's a good take, Mike. Mike, especially after what you saw with Stafford last night? Maybe so. Okay. Just Mike, you got you, you, you guys are right. That that makes me go back more to center. You're right. There's not a lot of quarterbacks. Isn't it funny? All the 40-year-old guys are the playoff quarterbacks in the NFC. I mean, Brady and Aaron Rodgers, right? Stafford, man, I don't know. I think he's hurt more than people think. Joe Maddock goes, damn, what's Gannon's background? I don't know. I don't know where he came from. I think he came from Indy. I don't know. I don't know. I've never. Then again, I didn't know who uh, Shane Steichen was. I didn't know who Kevin Stefanski was. Brandon Staley, I guess he was a coordinator when he was in, what, the Rams? I guess. I never heard of any of these guys. Brandon goes, damn, Dan, you love Garoppolo more than his family. Yeah, I do, because he wins. Don't you like winners too? Rage goes, Dan Cilio, did you hear Hertz echo a similar comment? to you and a presser. He said, I'm not worried about expectations because that means it's something you haven't done yet. Jalen, I love you. Huh? Very good. I, we all know they watch. We all know that. You know they watch. I don't hear any outside noise. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Okay? The organization does. No, I, I, I said this yesterday, Xander, about Jalen Hurts. If you want to face – and people mistook this, that I think he's a good quarterback. I said this about Hurts. 
if you want a face of your franchise and you want a guy who does all the right things, you want a guy that says all the right things, you want a guy who conducts himself in a great, great way to represent your company, this guy should be on the front cover of that manual. Dak Prescott, too. These guys have conducted themselves professionally. And I made the comparison. Then you got that idiot down in Carolina selling T-shirts, Unleashed. He's such a punk. Baker Mayfield is a punk. That's why everybody in Cleveland now that played with him is talking shit on him. He's a punk. Jalen Hurts is not. He's a leader. Don't get that mis don't get that confused with I think he's an elite guy because it's not. But I can work with him and I want how about this? I want to work with him. I don't want to work with him or block for him, Baker Mayfield. I want to block and work for him. And I I'm rooting for Jalen. I'm not rooting. For Baker Mayfield. Fly says, Cilio, your boy Ken Dorsey called a great game last night. I called him and told him too. We talked at length about Josh Allen's development and growth. And by the way, not too much of a drop off from uh, Brian Dable, was it? Ken Dorsey's going to be a head coach somewhere. You watch. That's why he didn't take the Miami Hurricane coaching job as being an offensive coordinator. They offered it to him. I set it up. Mario goes, you think Ken would take the job? I go, I'll ask him. Ken goes, man, I'm the OC now in Buffalo with Josh Allen. I go, I wouldn't leave. You'll be a head coach in two years. If that dumbass writ Jonathan Gannon can get a job in the NFL or an interview with the Houston Texans, Ken Dorsey will be a hot commodity next year. This year, Hurts' final season to prove himself. Jeez, man, we've been on this hamster wheel so much, Flex. It's got to be the end of this conversation. Jesus, criminy. How many years have you been on this hamster wheel about your quarterback situation? It's got to be nauseating. Man, it's like, since, it's like six years. It's a hamster wheel. We're going to look at week two of the National Football League. Also. D. Gunn from Sports Take and also from our fabulous post-game show, which you will see and hear on Sunday. I cannot wait for that. Can't wait for Mike and Seth to be sitting there. I'm glad that Big Joe and uh, Xander put these guys in different chairs. I think they have at least. So hour two, hit the like button. Keep it here on the National Football Show. My wife was in an accident that changed our lives forever. She was in rehabilitation for years. She had to learn to walk again. She couldn't take care of herself. We couldn't afford a nurse. We were running out of options. One conversation with Pond Lee Hockey changed everything. They understood what we were going through and immediately helped us navigate the legal process. We can't thank them enough. Pond Lee Hockey, tell us your story. Go for the pulse and the pools. Go for the ooze and the oz. Go for the bubbles and the bubbly. Go for the story and the stories. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. It's the number one news at 10 p.m. Action news on PHL 17. Join Shari Williams, Gray Hall, Deuces Rogers, and meteorologist Adam Joseph for all the big stories at a time that's right for you. Action news at 10 p.m. on PHL 17. I get scared sometimes. Of a lot of things. Joining in. Decisions. The dark. The dark. But I once heard someone say... But as I always say... It's okay to be afraid. As long as you face the fear. And keep moving forward. Wherever you are in life, count on the name trusted in insurance for over 80 years. Independence Blue Cross. (laughs) 
Welcome to Pond Lee Hockey. We've helped over 100,000 injured and disabled workers obtain benefits, as well as some of the biggest settlements in the state. If you've been injured at work, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. At Stateside Vodka, every new customer gets the world's best rocks glass, free. What's that? Uh, a rocks glass? You're telling me that bottle is cut in half? You could say that. Holy shit. And you're telling me I can get one of these glasses for free? That's right. One free rocks glass per customer with each first time purchase of Stateside Vodka. So good, it just disappears. Our number two, National Football Show. It's your boy, Big Sills. Please hit the like button. Appreciate everybody coming aboard here on a football Friday. And it is truly a football Friday. Some great college and pro football games. We're going to take a look at all those. Does it concern you that Atlantic City and Vegas have the Eagles in some places a a three-and-a-half-point favorite? Some places have them four points. Does it concern you? Does it concern you in any way when you see that? Not really. Okay. Xander's right, though, man. Dude, you want to really know who the greatest analysts are? There's a reason that castles are built in Atlantic City. Have you seen oceans? Have have you seen Treasure Island and the MGM in Vegas? You think they built those places because they lose with people rolling in there putting bets down? They build those places because... 74% of the time, they win the money. You know that? Like, when you go, do you know the best places to win when you go to Vegas? The Piggly Wigglies. They're set at 62% where the house wins. Those local little grocery stores, they're called Piggly Wigglies. When you go to the Strip, 75%. They got those machines set at losing, you losing. People still keep fed, feeding it in there and, you know, like candy. They play, they play the odds. Okay. Three and a half, four points. This guy's a great analyst, man. They think this game's going to be close. Again, I think 28 20. Because you know what's going to happen in the game? Coaching staff's going to kind of like jack around a little bit. They're going to kind of like jerk around a little. And they're, then they're going to realize, we need to run the ball. Let's kill this team, knock them out. Let's knock them out. If they don't knock that team out in the first quarter, I, I'll tell you what, I will kill that coaching staff on Monday. If they get out and they don't do, you know, you, you know, you know how they started, you know that how they started out against the Jets? That's what I want to see. I want to see that Jets, that Jets attack and that Jets approach. I want to see something like that. Okay. 31-20, more like it. I guess, eh, okay. Eagles are going to go 2-0, and Jose. You think you're beating the Vikings in week two Monday night? I can't wait to get to the Justin Jefferson game. See, the the Justin Jefferson game, I've got all these dubbed. Justin Jefferson game, the Commander Wentz game, the Dougie P game, the Zach Ertz game, the Dak Cow. The Cowboys don't really need a theme. Okay. 
when Hertz improves on his passing accuracy, he will click on all cylinders along with utilizing his mobility. Eagle man, do you, you, here's what I want you to understand now. And what, before we go into week two of the NFL, there's no quarterback in the national football league. That's going to throw for 4,500 yards and run for 900 yards. He doesn't exist. Flex goes, people don't realize this is the best talent Hertz will ever play with. Once you pay him 35 a year for four, the talent around him will get worse. Absolutely. That's what you said about Aaron Rodgers when they lost Devontae Adams. When you pay your quarterback, you got to sacrifice other positions. When Joe Flacco signed that gigantic deal, they had to start getting rid of Anquan Bolden. They had to start dumping guys like Bryant McKinney. They had to start dumping people. And that's why that franchise went the other way. They gave him that bag of money, and that was the end of the Ravens for a while. Then what happened? Then they got on, then they got on the uh Lamar Jackson train. Okay. Flacco's a bum. <laughs> the dude. The dude does have a Super Bowl win. He does have a Super Bowl ring. I seen a guy last night, Josh Allen. They do not want Josh Allen running the ball for 900 yards. Do I think he could do it? I think he possibly could. Okay. I didn't realize he had 15 picks last year. That's a lot. I thought he actually had a better 2020 season than he did a year ago. I thought he was better in 2020. He had 15 picks last year. That's a lot, man. Rodgers is a choker. So is Peyton Manning then. All around auto. Do you think Peyton Manning's a choker? He's got the same record. Brett Favre, you think he's a choker too? So you think all three of those guys are chokers. You wouldn't want them on your team. Brett Favre, Peyton Manning, and Aaron Rodgers. They have the same postseason record. And virtually almost the same accomplishments in the postseason. So you think all those guys are chokers. Okay, well, they all pretty much have the same records. Josh Allen reminds me of Big Ben. I don't think so. Big Ben ran with two cement shoes. This guy has some wheels on him. Okay? Okay. Rodgers choker, Favre choker. So you'd rather have Jalen Hurts over Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. Well thought out. (laughs) Well thought out. Peyton has two rings. Remember something. In that Super Bowl in Denver, he was the caboose. In Indianapolis, he was the engine. He was the caboose in Denver. Von Miller won the MVP that year. Got beat out by some stupid guy that they sent to the Houston Texans that robbed the Texans for money. Then they had to put him back in because the kids sucked out loud so bad. Dan, do you know your argument is flawed because Josh Allen is a dual threat? Josh Allen is a unicorn, I said. He's a unicorn. You're got stop with the Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen. I'm not bringing that up again because it makes me sound dumb. Are you nuts? And for the record, they don't want him running. He won't last. The war of attrition will beat him up like it's beaten Cam and Lamar. And Vic. And Steve Young. Steve Young left the game because of concussions. Okay? Not because he sucked. Hertz has lost every meaningful game he's had. Yeah, he's won nothing. All right, let's do this. Hey, hey, by the way, your boy's going to get a chance to play on Sunday. I can't wait to see. I I know how this thing's going to play out this year. 
I do. I, I know how this is going to play out. I had a great conversation with Ken Dorsey last night. Do you know one of the things? Do you know why Josh Allen is so successful? Two. Ah, I can't. I don't want to go there because you guys get your feelings hurt again, and I don't want anybody butt hurt over here. It's a football Friday. Should I tell you? He didn't, he didn't necessarily say anything about Jalen. But he said this is what ma- – uh, I'm going to tell you. Here's what makes Josh Allen successful. His 6'5 frame, his 4'5 40-yard dash he runs – his laser arm and his accuracy he has. I personally think he's a better quarterback talent than Jim Kelly. I think he's a better talent than Jim Kelly. We're going to get Jim Kelly on at the end of the month. I'll ask Jim that. Okay. Manning was losing to the greatest quarterback ever. Okay, well, Ben Roethlisberger's got a great postseason record and won a couple Super Bowls in Pittsburgh. What are you talking? I mean, he's got a better postseason record than than Peyton Manning does. Big Ben played in the era of Brady. Doesn't that apply to him? Flex? Look it up. I, I think Roethlisberger's fourth all-time in postseason play. Didn't affect him. He won a couple Super Bowls. He won all those postseason games. He never had a losing year in 17 years as a starting quarterback in National Football League. I don't know. Didn't seem to affect him. Then maybe. <laughs> hey, come on, Brian. Allen looked pretty accurate to me last night. Dude, he, he, Oh, man, that dude's a stud. A stud. Also, when Vic... Dude, Vic never won a game that mattered in his entire career except for one in Green Bay. There's nothing on that resume that makes me say I'd ever want to have Michael Vic on my starting NFL team as a quarterback ever. Now, Madden, yeah. But I'm not building my team around Michael Vic. He never won anything. Allen isn't accurate. Who said that? Allen is a complete... That's why I told you guys yesterday. Dude, it would not be close. That guy's the best quarterback in the game right now. And you're comparing... Some people are comparing Jalen Hurts to the best quarterback in the sport. Because he runs. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, let this sink in. Mahomes got the same amount of championship appearances, more Super Bowls appearances, and the same amount of rings in the five-year span. Then what, Rodgers? Yeah, okay. And pretty much every other quarterback. He's a gifted player. No one ever said he wasn't. But you're comparing Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady and Ben Roethlisberger, these are all Hall of Famers. Peyton Manning, (laughs) you're talking about the upper shelf of drinks here. Like the Louis XVI, you know, you're talking talking that kind of shit. You're not down here with Ripple. (laughs) Jalen's not Ripple. (laughs) Let's get into this. Let's get into these games, man. Let's take a look at week one of the NFL. I already told you where I was. We'll reset that at the top of the 3 o'clock hour. Don't forget, we have D. Gunn in hour number 3 at 5.30 Eastern. Man, I can't believe there's actually Philadelphia Eagles smart fans and some football fans around the country that are throwing the Allen and Hurts comparison. The only thing they have in common is their quarterbacks. That's it. (laughs) It's the only thing they have in common. There's nothing else in common. Nothing. Zero. 
I wouldn't say last night that running the football with Josh Allen was the reason they smoked the Rams. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Josh Allen is what Carson Wentz was supposed to be. Victor, I love that take. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. I like that take. I do. That's what Philadelphia Eagle organization thought that Carson Wentz was going to be was Josh Allen. Absolutely. That's a really good takes. Charles goes, Sills, you kind of being a hater. Because I said he's not Josh Allen? That's hating? Hmm. No, here's hating. I can't stand the guy because I just think the guy's a loser. Why? I don't know. I just hate him. That's a hater. Dan, why don't you like Jalen Hurts as a starting quarterback in Philly? Because I don't think running quarterbacks without accuracy win. You bash the dude a lot. Yeah, because I think you prop the dude up too much. Someone's got to be balanced here. He's done nothing to improve this offseason. The team around him has improved. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's in the system for a second year. Whatever that means. Everyone knows he chills as a hater. <laughs> Am I? Really? You guys were all mad at me today. Some of the people, LA guy, man, he ran. He didn't even stay in here because he didn't want to take a shellac. And I said, bro, he, he killed me yesterday too, going, Rams are going to annihilate the Bills. I went, bro, this thing will be over. And don't be mad at me on Friday. Don't be mad at me on Friday, man, when that Bills team takes you out to the shed and takes a takes something off a tree and gives you a whooping. <laughs> yeah. That was a whooping, man. At some point in time, when you're playing quarterback at that level, nobody cares about the regular season. We care about what you do when the lights are bright. Yeah, I mean, hey, so watch this. If Brady throws for 4,500 yards again and 40 touchdowns and he has a really great regular season, everyone's going to go like this with him. Uh, same thing with Rodgers. Okay, let's see what he does when he gets up. It's, it's in Dak's court now. Hey, by the way, Dak's got a lot of shit on him. He's got a lot of shit on him. I don't think anything of him. Watch this. I'm, I've got more of a wait and see a little bit on Jalen than I do Dak. I know who Dak is. Empty calorie stats. Can't win a big one. That guy wears that jacket now. He can't win a big game that matters. And until he can get that off his back like Steve Young did, he'll wear that. Dak Prescott, starting quarterback, Dallas Cowboys, can't win a big game that matters. That's a fact. Dan, who's hurts more like Culpepper or McNair? I'd say McNair. Culpepper was huge and had a big arm. Okay, had a big arm. All right, let's. I, I want to get into these games here. Let's start with Saints and Falcons. Why do I keep doing this? I don't know what you think of this one, Xander. But why do I keep looking at the Saints and going, can that be a surprise team this year? If Jameis Winston plays like he did in the first six games last year, that team gives Brady all the hell they can handle every single time they line up against them. I, I, I There's something about that Saints team. Olave from Ohio State's on the other side of the other Ohio State guy, Michael Thomas. You got Kamara in the backfield. You got Lattimore in the secondary. Dude, you got a lot of good football players, man. That Saints team's good. I think they win like around 28-20, something like that. But something about that Saints team. Flex goes, we know Rodgers is great. We know he can sling it, but I hold him to the same standard I hold Brady to. Well, if you hold all these starting quarterbacks to the standard of Brady, you'll be very disappointed. Okay? You'll be very disappointed. 
It's like people, when they hold the standard of Tiger Woods, Roy McElroy, or all these other guys. Andrea, thank you for becoming a new member. We appreciate it very much. All I say to you is this. You can't really compare when you're talking those kind of goat people, man. Hey, Big Sills, don't try to be on Winston now. I never said that Jameis was bad. I never said Jameis Winston was bad. I actually think he's a good thrower of the football. I think Bruce Arians' offense was a bad fit for him. I said that. That was my take on him. I've never said anything negative except for the turnovers on Jameis Winston and some character issues he had in Tampa. The whole cab scene, the stuff and the stealing at FSU, there's been character issues with Jameis Winston. Dan, Seals Channel is just a bunch of eagle haters. Ain't no eagle haters here. Derek Gunn, start of the new football season, baby, is like Camelot. It surely is, man. It's a national holiday. This should be like everybody get the whole week off. Hey, Dan, do you have winning the AFC West? I got the... I got the Chargers. I don't think the Chiefs are making a postseason. You see their schedule? I don't, we're we're going to talk about it here again. Dan thinks he's better than Hurts. <laughs> uh, hey, all cards, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Here's a good one. 49ers and Bears, baby. You know what this is? Can I tell you what this is? Well, it's kind of the Titanic. <laughs> What's this? What, tell me what this is. We're talking Bears and, and 49ers here. What is this? What's happening? Is that the Trey Lance ship going? <laughs> what, why is Trey Lance's boat going underwater? It's like the Titanic. <laughs> 49ers win this game in a close one against the Bears. Justin Fields looks better. It's at home. It's in Chicago. You watch this, man. Trey Lance is going to blow in this game. Remember I told you that. And he's lucky it's the Bears. He may actually play well because the Bears are terrible. Secondary's awful. Man, what a great – he better not stink in this game, man. He better not stink. He better not. You think Ty, Ty, you think Justin Fields shows up, Trey Lance? I don't think that's a tough reach. Okay. Hey, I think Nathan Peterman could show that guy up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if I'm the Niners, run the ball, baby. Hey, you think you'll see a lot of jet sweeps with Debo Samuel in that game? You ain't putting that ball in the hands of that dude, man. That ship's going down, man. Garoppolo, my boy, my paisan will beat his quarterback in week four. Steelers and Bengals. Will somebody tell me if, uh, if is, is Joey B playing? Hasn't had really any offseason at all. Steelers are going to be interesting. They got some pretty good football players. I got the Bengals in this football game. I think they're going to put points up with that offense, and I wouldn't be shocked if you see another 28-10 to 10 game there. Here's one for you. Patriots go to Miami. I think the Dolphins are going to win this game and an upset. I think you're going to go down, and from what I understand, it's going to be 100 humidity. <laughs> hey, not even the Eagles wanted to play in that thing, man. They're throwing hands or whatever, and they didn't want to be in any part of the Dolphins stuff. And I do think the Dolphins have a better roster. Now it's going to come down to two again. But I, I think the Dolphins win this game. I think they upset them 21-20 down in South Florida. Yeah, Dolphins big. Hey, Trevor, Dolphins big. I could I, I could see the Patriots rolling over. And, hey, hey Trev, is is – you think you think 14's big? 14 could be big. Miami's favorite? That shocks me a little bit. 
I think the Dolphins have too much firepower. So maybe it's not that much of a reach then. Yeah, I got the Dolphins winning this ball game here, man. Ravens and Jets. <laughs> yeah, the freaking Jets. Unless Fireman Ed comes out of what? Mothballs? Or he's resurrected? They have no chance. <laughs> Man, Lamar, man, he's got to be so pissed off about his contract negotiations. This guy's going to look like a machine. I guarantee you also, he's inspired by not getting his deal, and he's inspired by Josh Allen. I bet you he goes completely off against his Jets team. He is going to go nuts. And now he's betting on himself. He's going to be a Miami Dolphin quarterback. He, he's totally going to be. That's your Dolphins starting quarterback next year, Lamar Jackson. He wants to go home. I talked to the mom. He wants to play in South Florida. He's sick of the whole thing up in uh, Baltimore. Baltimore's not sure. And you know what they're going to get? They're going to get those 49er draft picks that they sent to Miami, and they're going to send those picks up to Baltimore. Then they're going to get Tyler Van Dyke, or they're going to get one of these kids coming out of college this year. Yeah, Lamar's going to go to Miami. He's going to be a starting quarterback in Miami. Uh-oh. Hey, how about this? Who are you guys rooting for in this one? Jags or Commanders? Who are you rooting for? Carson Wentz or Doug Peterson? <laughs> oh, man. I know who Xander's rooting for. Is he from Pompano? I thought, yeah, I think he may be from Pompano down there. I know he's a South Florida kid. Went to Louisville. Trevor's got the Jags. Jags, Jags. Yeah, you guys are all going for – no, where's the Wentz love? Aren't you going for Carson Wentz at all? Come on, Nathan. Come on, sales Jags. <laughs> hey, yesterday, hey, Xander, yesterday, Tone, I said who would have – more stats this year, Carson Wentz or Jalen Hurts. He goes, well, I just threw up all over my mic, but um, I've got to go with Wentz. Yeah, I, yeah, I thought he was from Broward County too. F Wentz. <laughs> Spoken like, hey, there is nothing better than an Eagle fan. So what do you, what do you make of Carson Wentz? F that guy. <laughs> I don't give a shit about that guy. Uh, <laughs> that's a secret i'll take with me xander can i show hey can i tell you the one thing that carson wentz and jalen hurts have the same problem with but we're where wentz is better i mean where um uh, hurts is better can i tell you that wentz versus hurts i gotta take a time out because I got the rest of the schedule. I wrote it down here because I don't want my CTE to kick in here. But there is something that Jalen Hurts does. I think he does it better than Wentz. Because Wentz, it always ends in a disaster. Okay? It always ends in a disaster. So I'll pick up. I haven't even said who I'm taking in that Jags and Washington game. All right. Guys, do me a favor. Morgan and Morgan are good friends. If you're hurt or injured on the job, one of the most important things you could do for you and your family is to get that fair compensation that you so deserve. Past 30 years, Morgan and Morgan has collected over $13.5 billion for their clients. That's what makes them the biggest firm in the country representing you. Whether it's a fender bender or the biggest case on the planet, they're there for you. They don't kick cases down the road or kick the can down the road. They represent you to the best of their abilities with their 800 attorneys across the country in Philly, New York, and in Florida. Nobody represents you better than Morgan & Morgan. Call them at 800-512-1600. That's 800-512-1600. The call is free. The consultation's free. Call them again at 800-512-1600. And when you call Morgan & Morgan, tell them Big Sales sent you. Many times when people are injured at a place of business, they don't realize they may have a case. The fact is injuries should not happen. And most of the time when someone is injured, someone is at fault. 
Maybe the store manager installed a cheap, slippery floor, or there wasn't proper security. After an injury at a hotel, restaurant, store, or any place of business, it's so important to call us. Time matters, size matters. Morgan & Morgan, for the people.com. greatest fans on earth it's a bold statement but would you expect anything less from philadelphia 58 years of heartache creates a toughness a grit a resolve not found in most sure our prayers were answered but now that we've had a taste we're looking for more pondley hockey official partner of the philadelphia eagles do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on acting. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go first! Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction. Go with trust. Go back. And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go first. Welcome to Pond Lee Hockey, the largest workers' compensation law firm in Pennsylvania. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured and disabled workers obtain benefits, as well as some of the biggest settlements in the state. Even better, Pond Lee Hockey doesn't charge a dime until you win. If you've been injured at work, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. National Football Show. It's your boy, Big Sills. Please hit the like button. Thank you so much. We're going over week two, and I'm going to get into something that Jalen Hurts does do better because we stopped on the Jags-Washington game that he does do better than Carson Wentz. Wentz is a better passer, plain and simple. He'll always put up better numbers than Jalen Hurts when it comes to throwing the ball. Will he put up more wins? He put up as many wins last year against different competition. Then, as did Jalen Hurts, he actually beat winning teams last year. He beat the Bills, too. Can you imagine that? Carson Wentz beat that Bills team last year. That's a pretty big win. Carson Wentz beat the Bills. He done. <laughs> All right? Here's what he does better, though, Jalen Hurts. Um than Wentz, but it's kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky how you look at it. Here's the problem that people have. Um, I know the Colts beat the uh, Bills. I know they did. He was on that team, and he's the quarterback. It's in his one last column like every other quarterback. <laughs> 
W2. He beat the Bills. Case closed. Give a shit about the Jags. He beat the Bills, that team that destroyed the Rams last night. Anyway, here's the biggest problem that Carson Wentz has. And by the way, this is Greg Cosell, who was on with Sports Take, guys. This is what and why Jalen Hurts is still a quarterback in the NFL. And the only reason he's a quarterback in the NFL. This is the only reason he's a quarterback still in this league. When, when, when Wentz drops back and Carson Wentz is allowing his wideouts to get open, patting the ball, patting the ball, patting the ball. You got to coach him out of that. But one thing he does, he sits in that pocket and he allows the complete route to be completed. There's no 60% of the route. There's no 65% of the route. The reason he gets sacked, he gives his wideouts every chance to complete their route at 15 yards, say it's an out or an in, a machine pass or what have you. Carson Wentz's biggest problem is the last 90 to 95% or 95 to 100% of the route where he just holds on to the ball and he doesn't have the anticipation of the guy being open. That's his problem. He sits there. He sits there. He's got great courage. He sits in the pocket. That guy, boom, sack. Dude, let that ball go at 95%. He doesn't. And his anticipation factor, or if you want to call it trust, in his wideouts, he's never had it. He's never had it. Here's what Jalen does. It's the only reason Jalen's still in the league. Jalen drops back. If it's not open in 60% of the route, he takes off running because he's got that ability to. That's why when Sirianni goes, if the play's not open, go ahead, take off. You know why? Because he has no confidence in throwing that ball to a spot like, say, a Brady or some of the elite guys. He doesn't throw to spots. He throws the wide open guys. If they're not wide open, he ain't throwing it. That's who Jalen Hurts is. Josh Allen is throwing BBs. And he's got a gun to make up for that 95 to 100% of the route. You see him, the reason that that DB last night took the ball out of the hands of the receiver, what a phenomenal play. Why did he do that? Because the ball got there the same time both men did. And the DB made a spectacular play. Allen put it on the spot. Like, that guy could have dotted an eye with that throw. That's how impressive that interception was. The kid from the Rams made an incredible... And by the way, do you see what Allen did last night? He made sure he targeted Jalen Ramsey. To let everyone know in the league, you can have the best cover guy in the league. It won't matter. It won't matter. You don't have a quarterback that could challenge Jalen Ramsey like that. That guy had 14 targets thrown at him. (laughs) Yeah. Stephon Diggs ate that guy like a tuna sandwich. Dude, that was a great defensive play on that kid. He stripped it out of his hand. It was in the receiver's hand. Wentz can't make that play. Jalen has ability to get away from that play by running. That's why he's still in the league. Hey, he'll get better, Jalen. And plus, Jalen's smarter than Wentz. There's no getting around that. Jalen's not going to put his team in a bad position like Wentz does. And that's why you see them shitty Titan plays or crappy-ass Jag games. Jalen's not going to do that. That's where he is going to have more wins and Wentz will have more stats. Carson Wentz and Kirk Cousins are a lot alike. Okay? They're going to put up big numbers. You know, not that not that Kirk Cousins doesn't win. There's, he's got a winning record. Okay? But Jalen has an ability of escaping that. It's not open. It's not open. I don't know yet. I'm still learning. And by the way, 
I'm still learning as a player to get trust in my wideouts. By the way, one of the great things that I am seeing, I do think the trust factor with AJ and Devontae, I do think it's twice as good as it was a year ago. Now, obviously, AJ's new, but I, I think that it's gotten better, and I think there's going to be more trust in the room. There should be already built-in trust with Devontae Smith. The kids, these guys have known each other how long, Xander? Six years, seven years? Okay? Cousins is way better than Wentz. I'm talking more about hollow stats than I am at anything else. And by the way, what I just said, Jalen was going to win more games with Jalen's mentality to the sport than what Wentz is. Make sense? So it's not a rip. Hurts is still developing. Wentz will never shake that. Wentz has a trust factor in his own brain cell. I think, but he doesn't have the ability to take off like Jalen does. That's where dual threat helps you. If the route's not there and you're not confident in the route, you can take off run and break down defenses, get out in the perimeter, break the edge down on the defense, make them have to trust that outside run. That's where he, again, that's where it's kind of, it, it, in many ways, it's an upgrade with Hurts at quarterback because the chances of you losing less games is higher with Jalen than with Carson Wentz. That's why the Eagles are happy with Jalen. Wentz is going to put you in more positions in a game where you lose, you lose ball games. Jalen's not going to do that because of the escapability. But see, you guys look at numbers and go, well, you know, with the, you're saying you're never going to throw for four. Who gives a shit? Win the game. Win the game. This is not BCS points in college football here. This is about getting across the goal line, winning ball games. That's right, Picken. Hertz is a he's far less of a risk taker. But so is Brady. Brady will punt. Tom Brady doesn't take Ricks. If he sees it's not there, it's a check down. Uh, then it's fourth and four. Punt. There is 60 minutes in a football game. You don't have to win the game in the first quarter, but you can lose it like Wentz can. Jalen knows that. That's where the upgrade is. Okay. Hertz has an O-line that Cousins could only dream of. Hertz should be a 4,500-yard passer this year. That will never come close to that. Jalen's going to win some bigger games this year. I agree. I agree, Eagle Man. Dax out of what? Big Sills, I'm scared of that Carson Wentz to Terry McLaurin connection. And also the kid from Penn State they got too. They're going to be good, dude. They're not going to be great, but they're going to be good in Washington. They're not going to be terrible. They got a better defense than the Eagles. They got a better defense. Chase Young is a superior pass rusher to Hassan Reddick. Okay? Superior. Remember I said that to you. They got a better they they got a better defense. Not by a ton. Not by a ton. It it's not glaring. And the Eagles have a better overall roster. Okay? And deeper roster. I told you this. They got the deepest roster in the NFC. Dan's going 360. What on what? 360 on what? I'm not changing my opinion on, on what? Yeah, that kid Dotson. He, he, listen, I think the kid Dotson, Olave down in New Orleans, and that Pickens kid in Pittsburgh, watch the years they have. I think that kid in I think that kid Pickens in Pittsburgh is going to put up some numbers. Xander was talking to me about him. I think it was the week before the draft. Was it George Pickens from Georgia? 
That kid can play. I watched him in the exhibition season. He's a good-looking talent, man. Pittsburgh always finds them dudes, man. There's no position. All around, you really think that the Eagles have a better defense than the than Washington Commanders. Where did you say? Your guys have never played together. They've never played together. And that's a take where you have no facts. You were second to last in sacks. And because you added somebody, you're coming up with this epiphany that they're better. They haven't played together yet. How can you make a statement when you haven't seen it on the field yet? Blows my doors off. Dude, we have been... Bradbury has not played in the Eagles system with Jonathan Gannon. He's not played. CJ got here nine days ago. My God almighty. You think these guys are like spark plugs and you can plug them in and it works. The best defenses are the defenses. Why? Get this. How many moves did Buffalo make in the offseason? Let's take a look at that. Well, they got Von Miller. Who else? Who else did Buffalo get? Who else did Buffalo sign? They signed one significant guy, a couple guys in the draft. That team went into Los Angeles and destroyed them because of continuity and talent. There's no major facelift in Buffalo. It's not, that's why I picked them. There's barely any turnover. The coordinator, I think Ken's better, actually. He called a great game plan. He was the quarterback coach last year anyway. Brought back Jason Phillips. He was there. The teams with the least amount of turnover are the teams that have the most success. Traditionally, every year. You bring in Allen Robinson. Oh, what happened? The guy missed a plane flight? How idiotic can you be? How idiotic? And you made some moves in the O-line? Well, that worked out. They got destroyed last night. Where was Aaron Donald? Did he play? Hey, the be- hey, hey Xander's best player in the game. Where was he last night? That dude looked like Casper the Ghost last night. You see him? Then he didn't. You see him? Then he didn't. Did he make any significant plays last night? I didn't see him at all last night. Best player in the game was a no-show. They handled him. Well, we'll forget when I said Fletcher was better than him. (laughs) I I liked Fletcher the way Fletcher Cox played. He had two sacks and a blowout. Congratulations. They weren't significant. <laughs> hey, Cooper Cup had 130 some odd yards too. <laughs> yeah, Cooper Cup had 130, 120, whatever it was. Yeah, so wait. Aaron Donald got his sacks, and Cup got his numbers, and they were destroyed. Mm. <clears throat> Let me get back into this. Oh, I know what's really horrible here, okay, is that I was right last night. God forbid if I'm right. Oh, yeah, I got you winning 28-20. Oh, you know, I got you 28-20. There we go. Jags in Washington. I think Carson Wentz wins this game in a tight one. I could see this game 28-26. Browns and Panthers in the um, unprofessional bowl. (laughs) Hey, hey, man. (laughs) You know what I love about the Browns? You know what somebody was telling me about? My wife was telling me, she said something to me about Jalen Hurts. She goes, you know, he's really a nice guy. And I go, that doesn't mean shit in the NFL. 
And she's like, why? It should matter. And I go, don't, don't talk to me about rainbows and butterflies and unicorns and, you know, pots of gold and shit like that. You're talking about the NFL. And he goes like this, look. He, he goes like this. He goes, she goes, yeah, but he's a good guy. I go, Kim, you know what? The only thing you need to know about the NFL is my wife, Kim. Birthday last night, too. It's great. Um, they gave a guy that had 24 sexual assault cases against him, 230 guaranteed million dollars. <laughs> they gave a really nice guy 230 million guaranteed dollars. You know what Andrew Barry's doing today? Oh my God. Oh my God. It's only 11 games. Yeah, that's some good guy. Came $230 million guaranteed. And he allegedly assaulted 24 women. Uh, that's a great, hey, character mattered there, didn't it? <laughs> Winning supersedes everything in the league. Yeah, but this guy's a great guy. Good. If we're going to have an award for father of the year, the best dude of the year in Philly, you got your guy. Hands down. Walter Payton, man of the year. Jalen Hurts is it. Completely it. Okay. Carson Wentz never took to NFL coaching. End of story for him. Well, he better do it with, uh, <laughs> with, with Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera beat his ass. Okay. Devin goes, you got room to talk, monkey. Oh, wow. Look at Devin. He can Google. Ooh, wow. Hey, Devin, you're part of the people in this country that think you can frighten people any longer with that shit. Not here. Frightens me none. You don't know me from a can of paint. Don't pretend to. You don't know me at all. You don't know the circumstances or my life or who I am. Don't kid yourself and don't pretend like you do in one of those internet assassins. You're part of the country that's pathetic. It sits around with an egg on his Twitter page and calls people racist when you don't know him from a can of paint. And you throw that word out when there's true racism in the world. So don't talk to me about shit like that. You have no idea who I am. And I don't run from things. I own them. You're damn right I said it. Mistake, 1,000%. But I don't run from shit like that. You got the wrong dude here, dude. Those other shows with other snowflakes, you can go bug them. The Immature Bowl. You know, I don't know why, but the Browns, I say, win this game. Okay? You're telling me, man. I, I, I will never root. I root against that guy in Carolina. I do. I root against that guy in Carolina. I think they run the ball right down the throat against the Panthers. Colts and Texans, I think the Colts take care of business there. And by the way, that Jags-Washington game, twenty-six twenty. Browns-Panthers, 26-24. Colts, Texans. 30-17. Thank you, Dank. <laughs> Thank you, Slasher. <laughs> Dank. Hey, 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 Dank, I think we're related because I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Dank, you know, you know, I, I think we're, to me, if you got a vowel in your name, like Moses Malone or Sammy Sosa, I think they're paisans. Always remember that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, 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 Anthony, I think you're onto something. See, I'm cool with that because he is Jerome Brown's friend, but you are a b-hole. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I love all you guys, man. Even you, Devin. 
Okay. <laughs> it's okay, Devin. I know, man. It hurts. It's okay, guy. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Slasher, man. That's funny, man. Dan, you're a butthole, though. <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh, my. Just got out of the dispensary. I, you must, hey, Mike, you must be jacked up for the weekend now. Now I'm ready to listen to the show. Hang on here. Here's, here's, here's my imitation of Mike. Okay. <laughs> hey, Devin. Wait a minute, Devin. I think that you and me have, have something in common here. Wait a second. I'm laughing my ass off. I'm watching your show at the end of the day. I love to hate you, bro. <laughs> Devin, you're welcome here now. As far as I'm concerned, I think you're welcomed. So who got out of the dispensary? Mike got out of the dispensary. Look. <laughs> Eagle, Eagle weekend. Now I can tolerate silly old shit. Oh, hang on. Here, let me get the other pipe on the hookah. <coughs> oh. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, hold on here. Hold on. Hold on, Mike. Mike goes like this. Jesus, Grammy, I got to really get stoned to listen to silly old man. <laughs> Mike's got to get too stoned to listen. Hold on. Hold on here, man. Oh, Jesus, Grammy. Hey, can I, can, can I get the... The purple wizard, please, in the in the yellow jar there. How many sticks do you have? Three in the box? I'll take it. What are you doing next? I'm going to go listen to Cilio and laugh my ass off. Hilarious. Oh. Whew. Oh, man, that's funny. You guys are terrible. Sills, you know you smoke after the show. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish up. D Gun's gonna join me in hour number three. I can't wait for that post game show that we have on Sunday here on Jacob Sports. I mean, God, it's a, it's the best post game show, I believe, in Philadelphia and maybe in the country. You're gonna have difference of opinions, and I can't wait to talk to Derek Gunn. I have so much respect for my friend, and God, man, it's just a great honor to get him on. So we'll have him on at five thirty Eastern. Please hit the like button. Hour three, keep it here on the National Football Show. Philadelphia fans were cut from a different cloth. Born into a brotherhood and bonded to our team for life. We believe anything is possible because we've witnessed the impossible. While we may be from different neighborhoods, come Sunday, we are one and we will be heard. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. The faces you know, the team you trust. The Delaware Valley's leading news program, Action News. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go first! <clears throat> Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years, and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction. Go with trust. Go first. And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go birds. At Pond Lee Hockey, we've recovered billions of dollars for our clients, and we're confident we can do the same for you. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, 
We've helped over 100,000 injured clients obtain some of the largest settlements in Pennsylvania. One conversation is all it takes to help you and your family get back on track. If you've been injured in an accident, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. National Football Show. Please hit the like button. Derek Gunn will join us at 5.30 Eastern Time. We're going to finish up week number one of the National Football League. Who do you think has the worst fan base in the National Football League? Who may have the worst fans in all of professional sports? Who do you think that is? Who do you think that would be? I'm going to tell you here. The Rams have the worst fan base I've ever seen in professional sports. They had to go to a silent count last night because Bill's Mafia took over SoFi Stadium. Could you imagine Cowboy fans taking over Lincoln Financial and having a... Dude, you get your ass beat down. I know people who went to the vet. Man, you didn't wear cowboy jerseys in the vet or giant jerseys. You would get your at. Hey, you know when Gary Cobb comes on here, you don't see that cowboy helmet in the background. <laughs> you don't see that cowboy helmet back there, man. Right? That was the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. That's not a fan base. You know who those dudes are? They're trendy fans. Ooh, what's going on? Is this where I can be seen? Oh, the camera's on me. Hi. It's so phony. It's the worst fan base in sports. They just want to be seen at games and then beat the 405 traffic. What a shitty fan base. And the NFL took the Chargers out of a place in San Diego where they had a good fan base. Or out of Oakland, where the black hole was founded. They didn't give a shit. They didn't care. They got their bag of money in Vegas and their bag of money in L.A. That is the worst I've ever seen. Of Dude, you're not rolling into Lambeau Field. And Chicago Bear fans are taking over. Lambo, that ain't happening. You imagine rolling into Heinz Field in Pittsburgh? Dude, you know what? That must be a Donnybrook between Eagle fans and Steeler fans at any one of them joints. That's embarrassing. That's I, I was like this. That is so L.A. last night. I mean, did you, did you see Stafford? He had to go to a silent count. I was like, wait a minute. The home team, you're lucky you didn't put the Raiders in there because L.A. is still a Raider town. What a shitty bunch of fans. That's terrible, man. Worst fan base in the National Football League are the Los Angeles Rams Charger fans. That's terrible. Yeah. You know, you, you can make arguments, man. Eagles, Patriots, um, Bear fans. Steeler fans, right? There's some really great fan bases around the country. Packer fans, they travel well too. Ram fans, you got better fans in St. Louis for the Rams than you do in LA. Yeah, but they moved the team so the value of the team could go up because it's market too. 
versus market, whatever it is in St. Louis. It had nothing to do with fan bases. They didn't give a shit. Just looks better in LA. Plus it's Holly fake. You know, anytime you're surrounded by Holly fake, you know, you, you, you get actors and actresses pretending that people give a shit about their spins in life. Well, you know, global war is shut up, dude, make a movie. (laughs) Honestly, shut up and make a movie. Well, you know, the guy in the White House, shut up. I don't care if it's Biden or Trump or whomever. No one cares. Okay? Go make a movie at Six Flags. That's all I want to watch you for. I don't give a shit about your politics, guy. You're an actress. You're an actor. Thank you. Hey, Holly fake. That's why everybody tunes into the Academy Nobodies. Dude, the most popular thing and the best thing that ever happened on the Academy Awards was watching Will Smith and Chris Rock. I mean, that was iconic. We'll always remember those Oscars. Okay? Don't, don't, what about the best film that year? I don't even remember. I, I think it was the Serena Williams film and um, the Richard Williams film. But other than that, I don't remember anything from the thing except for that. Oh, what, my God. Falcons? <laughs> that's another crappy. Yeah, that's a shocking one too, man. Falcons with a bad fan base. Seals, that's your good old you li- – hey, I, I, dude, I never – worst sports talk fan base in the history of the country is in Southern California. You can't say those things. Do you know that how I talk to you guys – wait a minute. Do you know how – and I'm, I'm going to finish up here. By the way, D-Gun again, 530. Do you know my program director used to call me into the office every day? You see how I'm talking to you guys today or how I always talk to you guys? They would go like this to me. You're being a little harsh on them, don't you think? I mean, I felt like I was Eminem, you know, in Eight Mile. Wally, don't you think you're being a little tough on the beaver? (laughs) Oh, by the way, Ice Cube started following Big Sills on Twitter. It was a highlight of my morning. (laughs) It was a highlight of my morning as my boy's now following me. Aren't you a little hard on the beaver? (laughs) Woo, man. Sills, you're being a little tough on everyone. Do you think you can, you know, what? Softer? Snowflake radio? Yeah. I was actually told that in a meeting. We kind of want you to do snowflake radio. I was like, wow, this is horrible. It was totally hard. I walked out of there going, I'll be fired in a year. (laughs) Uh, Hey, I'll be fired in a year, man. At least you guys give me shit and fire back at me, all your Hurt supporters. And you know what you guys do? You stick to your guns. That's why I never run. Right? Xander and I don't run anybody off unless unless you're being completely obnoxious, you're being racist, or you're being something that's not cool and hateful. That's, that's all good, man. Sports. Do you know how many death threats I get every day? You'd be stunned. And those are small-minded people. You know, the, one of the greatest examples of all that I've ever seen, I, I don't know if you guys remember when Tebow used to get, like, death threats from LSU fans. You know what he said? They got a great fan base. I always took that to heart. Tebow always, they were going after his sister, his mother. All kind of, Tebow would go, hey, man, they got a great fan base. That's why you love going there and playing against LSU. It's a perfect answer. It's a perfect answer. It is. All right. 28-20. I got your Eagles beating the Lions. All right. Let me finish this bad puppy up here. Yeah. Hey. You have to go to a silent count at home. Dude, all Jalen Hurts would have to do at Lincoln Financial is go like this. And you couldn't hear a pin drop in Lincoln Financial if he needed silence. You imagine, that would be like Dak going like this. And you guys cheering. Can you imagine you guys cheering Dak Prescott inside Lincoln Financial? Jesus criminy, man. Has to be one of the most embarrassing moments I've ever seen in pro football when it comes to fan bases. Okay. Has to be. Hey, yeah, look, look at Flex. Flex goes like this. Sills, Cowboy fans hide their jerseys at the link. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. I bet they do, man. All right, yeah. So I got past the immaturity game here with Browns and Pan. Oh, Giants and Titans. Ty- here. <laughs> hey, Xander, how many yards do you think Derrick Henry goes against the Giants this weekend? Let me think. I'm going to say Derrick Henry because he hasn't played in a while. I think Derrick Henry goes for 230 yards this weekend against the Giants. And all you see is this gigantic refrigerator running down. Is that Derrick Henry? Yeah, that's Derrick Henry. What's he got on his back? The entire giant defense. That's what he has on his back. This is going to be a great game. Seals, do you think football lasts in L.A.? Yeah, because the NFL wants it to last. Yeah, they want it to last. That's why they move. Hey, Stan Kroenke wrote a check and paid for that stadium himself. Do you guys know that that's exactly the place that Al Davis wanted to put the Raiders? And Pete Rozelle said no. They, he wanted to put the stadium right there. I was ahead of his time, man. Maverick. Packers and Vikings, who do you have? Who do you have in this one? Pipe, Packers and Vikings. It's in Minneapolis. I think the Vikings, oh my. So wait a minute. The Vikings are going to beat the Packers and the Eagles and start the season out 2-0? and Whoa. <laughs> Did I say that already? Hang on, I haven't even gotten to week two yet. The Packers are going to start the season out 2 and 0. I think they win this. I think the Vikings win this game. I think the Vikings win. Wow. Pa- Packers go down to the Vikings. The Vikings come in and play the Eagles on Monday night, shellack their ass at home, and are 2-0. and Oof. That'll be a storyline for another day. <laughs> Chiefs and Cardinals in Glendale. I think the Chiefs are going to struggle. I think the Cardinals win this ball game. Oh, my God. Watch this. Here's what's happening. Man, I can't get ahead of myself. Can you imagine this going down at Lincoln Financial? All of a sudden, you see Justin Jefferson catch his third touchdown pass, 183, 10 10 catches. And here's another guy just jumping up in the end zone and jumping over Darius Slay, and Jalen Rager goes in, and he scores a touchdown with 100 yards catching. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God. And then Wentz beats you, too. Oh, dude, do you realize this could be a nightmare (laughs) first half of the season? For the Eagles, if they don't have their shit together, you lose the Wentz, Rager scores a touchdown, Jefferson goes off, and Doug beats you. (laughs) And then the Cowboys shellack you again. Oh, boy. But I got to say this, Jalen Rager's not making – the only play Jalen Rager's, Jalen Rager's playing is when he puts his shoes on. That's it. Seals be praying on our downfall. Come on. Why would I re- – showtime. That would make the show shitty. Why would I want that? We've already made bets. Dude, why would I – you guys are not thinking correctly. You think that I come on here and I'm hoping for the demise of the Eagles so I could be right? Watch this. My wife will tell me this all the time. Hey, congratulations. You're right. No one's watching you now. (laughs) Xander, we go, hey, Sills, congratulations. You're right. You're fired. (laughs) No one's watching you now. (laughs) Hey, we love you, Sills, but, you know, Xander's like the NFL. So are the Krauses. Hey, we love the hell out of you guys. Is you know, you still got to produce. That's what I love about broadcasting. You can't hide behind your desk. 
you're either making money or you're not, or you're not, people aren't listening or watching you. Either way, you got to have one of them working in your favor. Can't root for a team to be shitty. Why would you do that? Even Gratlin Rice said it. I'm here to promote sports, not to piss on it. That's not what I do. Not at all, man. It's a great weekend. It's a football weekend. It's a sports weekend. College football, too. I'll talk some of them games. Absolutely not do I do that. I love sports, man. I don't pee on it. Not happening. That's right. That's right. What, what, what Xander said, bad players, bad people get killed. Verbally. Absolutely. Absolutely. You play bad, you get you get killed. Hey, Ben Simmons, you don't belong on a basketball court. And personally, I don't think you ever play a game again. Because why? He's soft. That the, that's not a that's not a take on the NBA. Even though the NBA player to me is weak. What's that thing called? Load management. You know what load management means in code for fans? And they know it. I don't give a shit about the regular season. Why should you? That's what, that's the code with that. Load management. I'm not playing this week. Imagine an NFL guy saying that. I'm not playing against the Lions this week, you know, because it's load management. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. You know what? I like to have load management too. When I got to go to my roofing job, do you think I could get load management too? Nobody's giving you load management hours off. Raiders and Chargers will be a good one. I got the Raiders winning that ball game. I think the Raiders are going to be a good surprise ball team this year. Then again, the AFC West. I think it's a hell of a division and it's the best division in all of football. Paul says Eagles start 0-2, then get their shit together to win seven of the next. Paul, that's what I said. Paul, that's what I said. Okay, they're going to go 2-4 and four in the first six, and then they're going to put a stretch run together like they did a year ago. Yeah. I personally think the tougher part of the schedule is the first part of the schedule. And to be fair, I want to see Jalen win a game that matters. He hasn't won one yet. Devin says, I think Herbert is just another Rivers. Uh, Devin, are do, so you don't think um, Phillip Rivers is a Hall of Fame quarterback? You don't think Rivers is a Hall of Fame quarterback? You don't think if Rivers had stayed in New York, he would have done the same thing Eli did? I kind of think he's better than Eli. If you had to give me Eli Manning or Phillip Rivers, I don't know. I might take Rivers. I think Phillip Rivers, man, was a good football player. I do. I think he put up, even his last year, he won 11 games in Indianapolis. Stretch out that Buffalo team in the playoffs, too. I like Rivers. You know that 2-4, that 2004 draft? I would say this to you. Roethlisberger, Rivers, and then Eli. I think they're all three Hall of Famers. Rivers will get in later because he didn't win shit. I think he got the two AFC title games. And I think he was more talented early on when he first got the start than what the Patriots were. I think the Patriots' first Super Bowl, I think the Chargers should have beat that team. But Rivers, I think, blew his knee out or something. I forget how that rolled. Um, Hey, that's a good one. So, Steve. Oh, wait a minute, Devin. So you think Matthew Stafford's a better quarterback than um, Phillip Rivers? He's got a ring, but he doesn't have a 500 record as a starting quarterback in the NFL. He won a Super Bowl 
So, Devin, do you think um, – is he better than McNabb? Yeah. Yeah. McNabb was too petty. Deshaun Jackson made all pro at two different positions. That shouldn't have been. His tiff and his little baby crying with T.O. was very weak. One thing Jalen has over Donovan McNabb, he's tougher mentally. McNabb is petty. Everything bugged him. Everything got in, got under his skin. Bro, go play. Be a good teammate. Root for your guys. Not shit on them. You know, give them kudos and pats on the back. Deshaun Jackson should have never have been an all-pro. Deshaun Jackson has the distinction of being the first guy and I think only guy ever to make the all the uh, Pro Bowl at two different positions, special teams and wide out. And then McNabb comes out saying he should never have. <laughs> okay. McNabb, six division titles. Almost got there, though, didn't he? Went in the big one. Okay. Almost got there. Hurts is tougher mentally than most quarterbacks. In some, okay, in some instances, that matters. I would say Jalen Hurts is a tougher guy mentally than Aaron Rodgers, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, Rodgers or Hurts. Unless Jalen's going to be a new running back for me. I ain't going near that guy. <laughs> oh, man. This is like a holiday. Oh, my God. And by the way, this thing at Oceans on Sunday, this post-game show, man. Okay, so you're going to have Mike Missanelli who texted me last night. He goes, so how do you think this thing's going to go? I go, well, you got D-Gun there. He's the only guy with any kind of reason. The rest of you two guys are going to be barking like dogs at one another. Seth's going to hate the defensive coordinator, okay, and the way the defensive system is. And, Mike, you're going to be baiting him, and D. Gunn's going to be actually the only voice of reason in the room. Our friend from Sports Take, they do a great job. I watch it every day. It's my friend D. Gunn. He joins me here now. Dude, man, I mean, I can't wait to – I cannot – I get more people in Philly doing this to me. Even Seth goes, how do you think? I go, this thing's going to be spectacular on Sunday, man. Between the show going on and this thing on Sunday, man, it's got to be like a holiday to you, no? By the way, congratulations on the addition. Thank you, my brother. Uh, yeah, two weeks. Wow. Man, time flies. He's two weeks old today. Elijah Joshua Massey. He was seven pounds, nine ounces. Um, little ball of joy. His 14-month-old sister thinks uh, that's her play toy now. Uh, so it's fun. And the 14, if he's anything like the 14 month old, he is going to be a hoot. And then I have a three and a half year old who's almost four who's here now, and he's a character, dude. I got to start getting back in shape to keep up with these kids, man. Hey, changing diapers and and, and rocking babies to sleep. I'm done that in years. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you one bit of advice, yeah, yeah, diaper genie. Uh, Hey, if I got to pay for it, I ain't buying it. No, no, no. You take the diaper off. You put yep. it in the thing. Yeah. It compresses it into a... Um, oh, yeah. My daughter has one of those. Yeah. yeah. Man, that was the godsend for me because I'm changing diaper. And my, my wife goes, well, you got to change these diapers. I mean, look, I pushed this hellion out here. This yeah. is on you mm -hmm. now here, man. Yeah. This, oh. And, I, and I, I, I sat around for two weeks in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> I think you changed. Man. That's all I did. I sat around for two weeks with my daughter in my underwear and diaper genie. That's it. But, but see, Big Sill, my wife and I, we said to ourselves and, and to my son-in-law's parents also, we got together last week. We said, you know, isn't our lives supposed to get easier at this stage? <laughs> you know, that's what happened to our parents. They sent us off. We raised our kids, you know, <laughs> and we brought them home to see grandma and grandpa once or twice a year. And man, I got... I got a daughter, a son-in-law, and a almost four-year-old living here. The, the the other wife with three kids lives 12 miles down the road. And then my son moved back home. So in my house, I have five adults, three crazy dogs, and a three-year-old demolition expert. And I'm thinking, 
Now, now, after I do the show, when I'm done at three o'clock, here's my day. When I'm done at three o'clock every day, I race two miles down the road to pick up my my uh, three year old grandson from preschool. I bring him home. I babysit him until my daughter either gets off work at four fifteen or my son in law, other son in law, gets home at five thirty from work. And then as uh, soon as I try to catch my breath, it's a honey do list a mile long waiting for me. <laughs> okay, and I'm thinking. Wait a minute. I only fished. I love the fish. I fished four times this entire summer because I'm on everybody else's time but mine. Well, you better make some time um, next year because Jimmy Johnson's got it set up. We're going to go on the boat, and he's got a boat for us. Oh. And this thing is going to be uh, deep sea tuna fishing. Oh. And the whole thing's paid for. What? All you have to do is get down there. It's two days of being out in the water, and they put you up in accommodations. The wife can come. You can take your significant other. So you and your wife, I think it's around your anniversary. In so March. You just take her down there. It's like between, I think, 4th and the fourth and the 6th of like March, something yeah, like that. Yeah, my anniversary is the 6th. I'm surprised you remember that. Yeah. An impeccable uh, memory. A few things I do have is my memory. Other than that, my <laughs> body's gone to shit, so I don't <laughs> Hey, Dude. I'm like Barrett now. By the way, you tell Barrett I'm very disappointed you left two uh, White Castles in the box. Not good, man. Dude, we, I, in an eight pack, you're supposed to eat them all. Why not just eat X-Lex? If you're going to eat that mess, why not just why not just consume X-Lex? I'm serious. I mean, when, when, I, when I was coming up, I grew up in Milwaukee, and the closest White Castle we had was in Chicago. So, you know, me and my boys, when we were 18, 19, we would drive down to Chicago maybe once a year just to get White Castles. It was cool then, but Back in 2017, you know, Barrett and I and a producer named uh, Aaron Talasnik, we drove, we made an excursion. We drove from Philly to Minneapolis for the Super Bowl. And we, you know, filmed it along the way, stopping at rest stops, clowning and stuff. As soon as we get to Minnesota, we get to St. Paul before we get to our hotel in Minneapolis. Barrett sees a White Castle. We has to pull in. I'll say, I'm, I'm going to buy one just to see what I'm missing here. And I'm not trashing White Castle because I know a lot of people like White Castle. Wait a minute. What time of the day was it? It was probably like about 4 or 5 o'clock in the no, afternoon. No, no, no. They they're better near midnight. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, when you got the munchies? Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, I know what you're talking about. Maybe. Yeah. No, I know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> so I get one. This man buys a box of eight and eats all eight of them. And I taste my one. I'm like, I'm done. I took two bites and said, I'm done. I hate I, to say it. I can't man, do it. I, I, brother, I couldn't do it. Barrett scarfed all eight. <laughs> and I'm like, like, dude, why? Are you, what do you do to your system? What does your system do to you? Oh, God, man. You guys have such a good time on Oh, my goodness. Day. Remember, man. man, to check those guys out daily, Monday through Friday, man. They do such a great job. All right. Derek, the hype of this team. Here, I hear you. And by the way, your stuff is right. so good. Hear, hear me out on this here. Okay. There are so many new faces on the defense. Right. There's new faces on the offense. This is all potential talk we're talking. Yeah. The Bills made two significant moves. Yep. They brought Phillips back and they got Von Miller and a couple yep. draft choices. They had yep. no significant turnover on that team. And I've always said this, the teams that don't make a lot of moves are traditionally the teams that have the greatest success. True. Why the hype this year, you think, for this football team? And here, let me add a little caveat to that. Is this the most hyped Eagle team since you've been covering the team? No, I would say the most hyped Eagles team was the – it's a combination. It would be that 2004 team that went to the Super Bowl because there were such high expectations. You had Lito Shepard, Sheldon Brown on their team, Doc on the back end with Michael Lewis. You know, you had the bookends. You had Trey Thomas and John Runyon. Donovan was in his heyday. Uh, Brian Westbrook was one of the premier dual backs in the league at that time. And T.O. was involved with that team. And T.O. came back, as you remember, um, missed the latter part of the season, came back for the Super Bowl and played on a less than 100% ankle and still had over 120 yards catching for them. They had a chance to win that game. Then you look at the uh, dream team when they brought in Namdi Asamoa and all these dudes. And that, team, that team crashed and burned. Okay. Um, I would say this is one of the top three hyped, most hyped teams since I've been covering this team. And I've been covering this team since 1997. Um, so there's a lot of hype, and I understand why. And as I said on my show Sports Take earlier today, here's what's generating most of the hype. 
Because, see, Howie Roseman didn't bring in just role players, okay? He didn't bring in roster fillers. He brought in players who were significant contributors to the other teams they were with, okay? A.J. Brown, 1,000-yard receiver his first two years, missed some games last year, finished under 900 yards. Um, James Bradbury, when he was with Carolina, was considered one of the premier corners in the game. And, of course, money reasons got him jettisoned out of New York. Johnson, down in New Orleans. You know, they couldn't have come to a meeting of the minds money-wise. Aggressive player, tutored under Malcolm Jenkins. Okay. Um, who else? Kazir White. Every day the Chargers is talking. They talk openly about they hate the fact they let Kazir White, but you can't pay everybody. I think you know he's going saying? to the Pro Bowl this year. I do too. If, 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 and this is a big if, if Jonathan Gannon uses his weapons properly, this will easily be a top 10 defense. Easily. D Gunn, when you say that though, they were top ten last year. And yeah, they were. They let were me top- say this okay. to you. Yeah. Here's big. Here's my biggest problem with Jonathan Gannon. I don't like when coaches start to single out or organizations single out that it was the players a year ago. Right. That you were the reason that you couldn't be creative. I think this guy, like Seth Joyner, does. I think it, who he is is who he is. He's not going to change his stripes. If you, I think today's NFL, Derek, is this. Keep everything underneath. We saw it last right. night. We saw it last Buffalo even, even, all day. Even with the Bills. But the only difference is those Bills players have been together longer. Absolutely. And the front four got after the quarterback because that old line was not efficient enough to stop them. When you got four guys yep. beating five guys, you control a football game. Absolutely. And those secondary guys, they're hitters. Those corners are really good. They and don't so- miss tackles. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I, and, I, and I get today's mentality, and I, I think Seth and I have to climb out of that Jim Johnson and Bud Carson type style where, look, man, I mean, Reggie White and LT and those guys, they could find numerous. They'd be like, they'd be like perfect today because yeah. you can't yeah. hit these guys. So I get yeah. that. But, boy, Jonathan Gannon, man, I mean, you think he improves from a year ago, D-Gun, just because he's got better players on his team? See, that's why I have a wait-and-see mentality with Gannon because I truly believe he's going to play that seven to nine yards off the off the receivers and keep everything in front of them. The difference is Micah Hyde and Jordan Poirier are arguably the best dual safety combination in the NFL because they can flat-out fly. The corners can flat-out fly. And the number one corner, Tredavious White, didn't even play the game. Okay, So they've got a, they've got a bunch of dudes that can flat-out fly to the ball and get to the receiver. Did you notice how quickly they would get to the receiver by the time the receiver caught the ball and turned to try to make a move up the field? That gap down. Dude, as well. was, I thought they sick. were so prepared, and McDermott showed yeah. me so much on that defense last night. They were well prepared. It was it was sick, man. Now, we don't know if the Eagles secondary can do that. We think it's a good secondary on paper. It looks – but see, I don't have to tell you this. You don't play the game on paper. My concern is how long will it take for all of this – these new toys Jonathan ha- has at his disposal to gel. Now, I do think, and I'm not overlooking any opponent, Opponent, I do think Detroit is the perfect team for this team to come out, the Eagles to come out, make mistakes, and still beat this team by double digits. I look at Detroit, a team that was 313-1, and one, they didn't make any significant wholesale changes. They're coming back, coming back to the workplace – with basically the same group of guys, except a few additions, Aiden Hutchinson, you know, but I don't see them out muscling the Eagles. The only way Detroit no. has a chance to beat this team is to out muscle the Eagles. I don't think they can do that on either side of the football. I think they have some nice component weapons, uh, DeAndre Swift, St. Brown, but I don't think they, uh, Hawkinson, I don't think they have enough weapons to, to really beat this Eagles team, to march down the field consistently 10, 12, 14 plays and beat this Eagles team. So I think the Eagles can come out rusty because they've only the starters have only played one or two series the entire preseason together. They can come out, make mistakes, and still have a good measure of success. I really won't be able to judge what Gannon, Jonathan Gannon is or is not until that next Monday night game against Minnesota when the competition level increases significantly. Absolutely. And, you know, for those I just got through saying, the Vikings are going to be in a divisional matchup this weekend with yes. the Packers, so yep. they're going to be primed and ready, and they're not going to have like a preseason team to play against. And I'm not, no, no. I'm saying the same thing you're saying about the Lions. I'm saying more 28-20. Yeah, I talked to Rick Sp- or Chris Spielman the other day, who's an executive up there now, and from what I'm understanding is they're going to put eight guys in the box, 
and they're going to try to make Jalen Hurts try to beat them. Now, I still think they outmuscle them because I think the Eagles are that football team. Deacon, you don't think uh, Shane Steichen and Sirianni and these guys are going to do something crazy and get into a jabbing contest where last year they were in a – they threw hands, knocked them out early. It was 44-6. to six. Right. You don't think they're going to keep them in the ball game and do something completely different because they want to open up the passing game. It won't make sense. Well, I think I, – I, I said it earlier today. I would not be surprised if the Eagles came out throwing the ball because if you look at that first that series, the only series we saw Jalen Hurst play, they went down the field. They didn't run the ball. They threw it. He was six for six on that series. They got a touchdown. He got off the field. Jet series. Yeah. The Jets, the Jets, yeah. So I can see them coming out, going down the field, passing the ball, get get Detroit thinking about the passing game, and then all of a sudden punch him in the mouth with the running game and try to control the game that way. And then they'll say, let's see if you can stop us. You couldn't stop us last year in the run. Let's see if you can stop us now. I don't care if Aiden Hutchinson is here. He's going up against Lane Johnson and Jordan Malata. And if they move him to the inside, he's got another pro bowler there and Jason Kelsey waiting for him. So let's see what this Aiden Hutchinson is all about. Michael Brockers. Let's see if our two guys can beat your two guys on the edge. I don't think it would be smart for Detroit to put eight men in a box against this Eagles offense because Detroit does not have the personnel. Tampa Bay did the same thing against them with in that playoff game in January. Okay? Agreed. You put eight men in the box. You're going to leave AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins, Pascal, one on one coverage? The, the, the Lions serious? don't have that back end like the Bucks do. Are, are you serious? You're gonna right. leave them a one on one coverage with these guys? Now, now if they do get pressure on Jalen, let's see how quickly he can decipher what he's looking at and get the ball to one of his hot reads. That's gonna be interesting to see. If Detroit finds out they have a measure of success putting heat on Jalen consistently, that's gonna be an interesting ball game right there. You know, I heard you say something because you've been covering this team, like you said, since 97 about how he, in the last two days, he's been restructuring the contracts of people so he can get more into the cap. By the way, five and a half yeah. million dollars of the Alshon Jeffries deal finally comes off the books this year right. too at the yep. end of the year. And the cap is going to go up big time. My question for you is, do you think they're preparing at the end of the year to start contract talks with Jalen Hurts? And that I don't I, I don't think it's I don't think it's I don't think no I think right now Jalen is it is in a 17 game audition he knows it he's in a 17 game audition this team has to come to a meeting of the minds at the conclusion of this season that Jalen is or is not the franchise quarterback moving forward they are armed with two first round picks la uh, next year so in a great position if they have to go into the draft looking for a quarterback and I wouldn't put it past Howie to try to move up if he decides he needs a quarterback. But we're going to find out what Jalen is or is not. I think they made all these moves. They've done they've done three players, restructured three players' contracts um, in the last 48 hours. In my time covering Howie, that tells me there might be another move on the horizon early in this season. Once the season starts and they decipher that they may need another body at another position, well, at that point, guess what happens? You got a whole lot of veterans sitting at home, anxious, waiting by phone for somebody to call them, and they'll come in here in one of those one-year deals and play out the season and try to enhance their, their their status to get bigger money next year. So whether it could be a running back, could it be another secondary personnel guy? Don't know. Could it but be I, Bates in Cincinnati because he's on a one-year deal? Could be. You don't know. You don't. You just don't know. But anytime Howie does something like that, they're going to make a move. To me, it's going to make a move before the trade deadline. They're going to wait and see what they need, and then decide exactly what it is they want. Finally, here, success for Jalen Hurts in 2022 will be what for you? When you think of success this season, what success? Because some people put mm. it with numbers, some people put it with wins, division titles, playoff wins. What is success for you, D Gun, when it comes to Hurts this year? It's easy to say that he has to improve on 61% completion, 3,144 yards passing, 16 touchdown passes. It's easy to say the numbers have to improve. But for me, he has to improve in a lot of areas that he already knows he needs to improve in. Um, accuracy. Um, putting the ball in, in tight windows more consistently. Being able to go through his progressions a lot quicker and a lot better and making the right progressions. 
Will he stay in the pocket a little bit longer to let one of his uh, pass catchers free themselves up instead of taking off and running uh, too soon at times? To me, if he can answer, if, if you can check out the yes box to all of those, I think the Eagles have them a nice quarterback for the future, and they don't have to move with a sense of urgency trying to look for another quarterback in 2023. Okay, well, I just want you to do one thing for me, um, and this is a personal request. I yeah. need to have a YouTube of you grilling because I've been fired in my house by my wife. She's now the official griller with the lobsters, the scallops, the fish, and the, all the meat. She kicked me off the grill, and she's like, look at your look at your guy Derek Gunn here. Look at Barrett. These guys – Barrett even knows how to make Chinese food. He knows how to make rice. And I'm like, I've been completely fired. I, I sit in a chair and I'm the coal guy now. So I, I'm, I, if I need help, D Gun making making steaks and such, man, I, I got to call you, dude, because I'm right. I'm a horrible griller, man, and I love to eat. Dude, I have five different types of grills on my That's patio deck. <laughs> dude, I have I have a big green egg smoker. I have a Traeger smoker. I have the the standard Black Weber kettle grill. I have a charbroil infrared um, a gas grill, and what what am I missing? Oh, and I have the uh, Blackstone flat top grill, four burner grill, thirty six inch grill that we do hibachi stuff on, smash burgers and stuff like that. So, but it's funny you should say that because last night I'm sitting there watching the game, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, my wife goes, "Hey, did you see Barrett's wife uh, wife's uh, Facebook page? No, why?" Well, Barrett's making all these different dishes. Uh, man, you better get on a job. And I'm like, Barrett is not picking up kids and babysitting kids around the clock, okay? Barrett does what he wants to do when he's done with the show. I'm babysitting kids. When my wife babysits the grandkids, I'm trying to go out and run errands. She tells, hey, when are you going to be back? Why? I need a break. What do you mean you need a break? I babysit them by myself the whole time. Why do you need a break? Oh my God! Man. Oh, you have no idea. My house oh no, no. Hey, I, 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 hey, I told my wife the other night too. I yeah. go, you know, man, you cook the food, and I'm in the kitchen until eleven thirty cleaning the stuff up. She goes, yes. well, you could cook, or I could clean. I go, damn. <laughs> See, that's me every night. I'm trying to watch a baseball game or something. Eleven thirty, twelve o'clock, twelve thirty. I'm cleaning dishes. My wife is an incredible cook and baker. Those mine. Her, her, her cheesecakes, her her chocolate, uh, her her chocolate ho ho cakes, German chocolate, anything, cookies. She makes these chocolate chip cookies, dude. She makes these cookies and she puts a chocolate square in the middle of them. You hold the cookies and when you bite them, the chocolate's running down your face. Oh it's so my soft. God, it must be oh awesome God. around holiday time. It's it's ridiculous. And and on top of that, in Easter, she makes these uh, chocolate peanut butter eggs. She puts peanut butter. Dude, let me tell you something. It's like crack, man. You can't stop eating them. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> you know. I can't wait to watch you guys on Sunday, man. I think we have the best post game show in the country. Clearly, also in Philadelphia, man. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens on September 11th. Have a fabulous football weekend, D Gun. I have so much respect for you, and thank you so Likewise, much, my for brother, support, my friend. Hey, I just want to say also for everybody out there on your on your chat. Uh, hey, don't forget uh, my Gun on One podcast. It's entering its third season, and I'm moving it over to the Jacob Sports Media Network, awesome. so you'll be able to see it on their YouTube channel as well as you uh, get it as you always have on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your um, your podcast platform. So, um, my, you know, the podcast is doing great. Our show is blowing up. As you know, your show is blowing up. The network's blowing up. You know, it's, it's just a good thing, and, and happy to be a part of the family to get to talk to guys like you and Seth and, and Barrett and Rob Ellis and – Mike Missinelli, man, just happy to be a part of the whole scene, man. I'll definitely subscribe to it today. Thank you so much, D. Gunn. Have a great weekend. Appreciate you, my brother. Enjoy your football weekend. You got it, man. Derek Gunn, I so look forward to watching that show. Don't forget, it's right here on Jacob Sports. We'll be back in a second. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Greatest fans on earth. 
It's a bold statement, but would you expect anything less from Philadelphia? 58 years of heartache creates a toughness, a grit, a resolve not found in most. Sure, our prayers were answered, but now that we've had a taste, we're looking for more. Pondley Hockey, official partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on that can you... Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go birds! Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust, Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction. Go with trust. Go back. And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go birds. Welcome to Pond Lee Hockey, the largest workers' compensation law firm in Pennsylvania. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, we've helped over 100,000 injured and disabled workers obtain benefits, as well as some of the biggest settlements in the state. Even better, Pond Lee Hockey doesn't charge a dime until you win. If you've been injured at work, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Go for the midnight tears. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at theoceanac.com. National Football Show, please hit the like button. Ooh, we can't wait for Sunday. Whew. Oh, it's here. I have my internal thoughts on Jalen Hurts. Okay, I do. I kind of know how this is going to play out. I do. Ooh, I but see. I don't. I don't want. I don't want to talk about it any longer. I want to see it on the field now. Because I know how this is going. Because you know. What's, hey, what? Here, here. I'll give you a little hint. What do you do when things aren't working the best? And someone asks you to do a new project, to do something new that you've never done. What do you resort back to? Doing what you're comfortable doing. This is, I think, here. I think this thing's setting up to look exactly like last year, but better. They'll try throwing the ball early. And then they'll resort back to doing what they do best. And then there'll be a con conversation at the end of the year and what to do with Hertz. And you'll be on the same hamster wheel again. That's how I see it. Now, he, he may do things that you guys say no other quarterback has ever done in NFL history. 4,500 yards and 900 touchdowns, 900, whatever. The next Josh Allen or some shit. Okay. We'll see. Two things I have issues with going into this game on Sunday. Gannon hurts. Gannon hurts. Pick one. You can throw him in any order you want. Any order you want. So you really think they're going to use Hassan Reddick correctly? Ooh, man, I can't wait to see that. Dude, if I see that guy covering tight ends, that tight end in Detroit will kill him. That tight end in Detroit, you're covering him in pass coverage. That's not what that guy does. He's not, 
He's very average when it comes to playing the run. I don't want him playing the run. You better rush that guy off the edge because that's who he is. He's an edge rusher. You don't really see TJ Watt covering tight ends, do you? <laughs> you, you, think the, you think the guys in Pittsburgh, like Carl Dunbar and them guys, you think they want TJ Watt covering tight ends and backs out of the backfield? Hell no, they want that guy rushing the passer. They want him getting after it. Just come out and say, you think Hurts sucks, it's okay. I don't think he sucks. I just don't think he's good enough to be your starting quarterback for the future. There's nothing wrong with that. Hey, watch this. I don't think Zach Wilson is a starting quarterback in New York. I don't think Trey Lance is the future in San Francisco. I will walk a step back on Justin Fields in Chicago. I saw improvement in the exhibition season. I did. Okay? I did. The kid Mills in Houston? I don't know yet. Okay, I don't know. Jameis Winston? We'll find out this year. Pressure on his ass. Dak? I don't, I think there's buyer's remorse. That's not a $45 million a year guy. I don't care what you say. That guy's never won a, hey man, if I'm talking to you about Jalen Hurts not winning significant games, at least I'm not paying $45 million to say that. Jerry Jones is. At least in Philly, you're only saying, well, Jalen Hurts hasn't won a significant game, but you're only paying him 1.1. You're paying him less money than Zach Paschal. We lost sales, everyone. I'm going to hit a break. I think that's going to be the end of the show because he is out of here on his internet. So have a good weekend, everyone. Hope you guys tune in on the post-game show. Big week. Eagles Nation. is Eagles season is finally here. See you guys this weekend. greatest fans on earth it's a bold statement but would you expect anything less from philadelphia 58 years of heartache creates a toughness a grit a resolve not found in most sure our prayers were answered but now that we've had a taste we're looking for more pondly hockey official partner of the philadelphia eagles do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Android TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. The big story on action. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. Go passionately. Go fearlessly. Go confidently. Go first! <clears throat> Go confidently towards your goals with First Trust. Philly's hometown bank for nearly 90 years and the official bank of the Philadelphia Eagles. We're focused on getting you over the goal line. So go with conviction. Go with trust. Go first! And go forward with us by your side. First Trust Bank, the official bank of Philadelphia dreams. Oh, and go first. Welcome to Pond Lee Hockey the largest workers' compensation law firm in Pennsylvania. With over 250 years of combined courtroom experience, 
we've helped over 100,000 injured and disabled workers obtain benefits, as well as some of the biggest settlements in the state. Even better, Pondley Hockey doesn't charge a dime until you win. If you've been injured at work, give Pond Lee Hockey a call. Go for the midnight dares. Go for the game. Go for the hits. Go for the fans. Go for the win. Go to Ocean Casino Resort. Book your trip at the 